week ago Sunday in this blizzard in Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, with this touchdown burst by Franco Harris, beat the Bengals seven to three. Yesterday, they swarmed over Tampa Bay, 42 to nothing. Their playoff hopes still alive, but they must wait and watch that man tonight. Kenny Anderson, the brilliant quarterback of Cincinnati, will be throwing to his favorite target, number 85, the brilliant, elusive speedster Isaac Curtis from San Diego State, as the Bengals go against the Oakland Raiders. And the Raiders are led by that man with 23 touchdown passes thus far. Kenny Stabler, who throws to Fred Boletnikoff with maybe the best hands in football. And to the world-class printer from Colorado, number 21, Cliff Branch, who is averaging better than 25 yards per reception. He's the league leader in that category. Whenever these two teams meet, there is more than offense. There is tremendous defense, like here, as you see it, intense hitting again and again and again. This in their playoff game a year ago. And in that game, 31 to 28, won by Oakland. The Raiders had to hang on to win it against two late touchdowns by the Bengals. This was the winning Oakland touchdown. A throw to Dave Casper. A key game, the Bengals against the Raiders. Stand by, 10 seconds there. Oh, here we go. You all Camera two, ready your opening shot. Oh, give me only three. Stand by the roll tape. Right. Roll tape. Now I got it. Two, one. Take down the two. You can do it. Oakland, California, our second Monday here in the beautiful Bay Area. It's a perfect night for football. The temperature on the field at the Oakland Alameda County Stadium expected to be in the low 50s, the mid 40s. While the temperature of the fans in the Bay Area for tonight's game is at a fever pitch. And ABC's Monday Night Football, the Cincinnati Bengals and the Oakland Raiders is brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. When America needs a better idea, Ford puts it on wheels. Test drive all Ford better ideas for 77 at your local Ford dealer now. And by the Miller Brewing Company, brewers of Miller Highlight. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. The standings in the Western Division of the American Football Conference speak for themselves. The Oakland Raiders, with the best record in the National Football League, have clinched their playoff berth. But in the central division of the same conference the situation remains unsettled the cincinnati bengals if they can beat the raiders tonight and the jets next week which is most probable will be in the playoffs however if cincinnati loses tonight and pittsburgh beats houston next week which is probable the steelers would be in the playoffs because twice in head-to-head -head battle they have beaten the cincinnati bengals the Cleveland Browns have only the remotest chance of making the playoffs despite their fine 9-4 and four record. Cincinnati and Pittsburgh would have to lose their remaining games, and then Cleveland would have to beat Kansas City next week for Cleveland to be in the playoffs. But everything's at stake here tonight for Cincinnati. That's why the game is so critical. A quick word about the two coaches. Bill Johnson of the Bengals, it came to him late. 50 years old, the head coaching job but he's been beautifully trained for it, and the fine record of his team this year attests to the fine job that he has done. As for John Madden, he lost, it seemed, half his team when the season first began. Art Toms, out for the year. Horace Jones, out for the year. Marv Hubbard, the fine running back, out for the year. Yet he's held that team together, has the finest record, as we said, in the NFL, and in my personal book, he is the coach of the year. 
There's been a lot written all week and a lot said about how the Oakland Raiders don't want to face the Pittsburgh Steelers in the playoffs that they'd rather go against the Cincinnati team or any other team. Well, you Pittsburgh Steelers are watching tonight. Don't you believe that for a minute? You're rooting for Oakland, and you don't like this Oakland team, and they don't like you, but they're not afraid of you. I went to Coach John Madden and asked him to comment about all that's been said and written this week. He said, I won't even go on camera, Howard. I won't dignify such charges. They're absurd. They're ridiculous. Let's bring in Alex Garrett. How do you feel about How about Oakland? David and Goliath? Do you remember them? No, no you don't remember What's them. the relevance? Well, the, revel the rel relevance is that uh, David uh, slew uh, 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 Goliath, and he, I don't think he wants to do it over again, you know? I mean, he was lucky. Got a good shot in there, and that was it. And I don't think that uh, Oakland would like to play Pittsburgh. And I'm not saying that they're going to, you know, go out here and not play a good ball game, but I think psychologically they don't want to throw the stone at the Giants. They want sleeping Giants to, to kind of sleep hard. Well, let's so bring in Frank Gifford. What and let's get his feeling about all this. Well, I feel a little like John Madden. Uh, I don't think there's any question. Oakland's going to come out. They're going to give it 110% if they can dig it up somewhere. They're hurting. They're hurting. They've lost a lot of key players. But if you know Al Davis, the managing general partner, owner, whatever his title is, I know him as a football man. He likes to win them all. His one loss record in his career is very important to Al Davis. Head coach John Madden, there's no question as to whether or not he wants to win or lose. And the key thing for the Oakland Raiders is if they lose tonight, they could lose to San Diego. They've had some tough games with really uh, relatively weak teams all year long. If they lose two games in a row, they're going to wind up playing a championship game somewhere back in the East. They'll go 110% is the way I see it all the way. I see it the same way, well, Frank. I Not that we don't like you, know. Okay. Well, I, I know that. You, you know that. But I want to make one other point. Go ahead. There are those who say the Oakland record is deceptive, that the Raiders have had the soft schedule this year. The Raiders want to prove their caliber tonight by beating so fine a team, if they can, as Cincinnati. Howard, can I make a point right here? That schedule, by the way, a lot of people don't realize was not made recently. That schedule came out in 1970. It goes through 1979. It's not a recent schedule. If it seems to be easy, well, that's just the way the cards happen to have fallen. Absolutely right. And on the record, Oakland has been in the playoffs year in and year out. We look for a super game. We'll be back with the opening kickoff in just one moment. Cross your heart bras. One of many popular products from Playtex, known and used by women the world over. Playtex is part of S-Mark, an American family of companies which also provides nourishing food products from Swift, fertilizers to make more food available, and energy to keep the wheels turning. S-Mark, providing over $5 billion worth of needed products annually for you and your world. Samantha Agar for Color Track from RCA. My eyes are green, my hair is open, and my dress is vivid red. RCA wanted me to tell you the right colors because getting the color right is what their exclusive color track system is all about. It's a remarkable development that actually adjusts color and keeps it on track. Before you see the color, the color track system grabs it, aligns it, defines it, sharpens it, tones it, and locks the color on track. RCA is making television better and better. A massage and a hot shower. Together they work wonders on the aches and pains of life. And now there's a shower massage by Waterpick, a way to get a massage every time you shower. Thousands of tiny bursts of water adjust for a gentle, relaxing massage, a brisk, invigorating massage, or a regular shower. Get America's favorite, the shower massage by Waterpick. Everyone knows the key to victory is staying calm and collected. That interception ended the Dolphins' two-year Super Bowl reign. A great moment for me and the Raiders. But let me tell you about another great moment. Alice and Robert Reynoso were married six years without a child. With the help they received at this United Way supported adoption center, the son they longed for came into their lives. Thanks to you, it works for all of us. The United Way. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. And there's a beautiful moon over the Oakland Alameda County Stadium. No one, however, is looking up. The seams are cracking here at the stadium. A sellout crowd. And we'd like to welcome Pittsburgh to our telecast because I'm sure they're not looking at the moon. They are pulling for the Oakland Raiders to knock off the Cincinnati Bengals to give them a shot. 
You're looking at Ray Guy. Cleveland, of course, is in there with an outside chance. They, too, pulling for the open Raiders over Cincinnati. Cincinnati with a 9-3 record. Pittsburgh 9-4. Cleveland 9-4. Ray Guy will kick off. Willie Shelby, number 30, is deep. Archie Griffin, a two-time Heisman Award winner, is back there with him. Willie Shelby from his own five-yard line. And Shelby runs into the Raiders at the 22-yard line. Hustling down there, Floyd Rice made the stop. Offensively for Cincinnati, it'll be Ken Anderson, number 14, a great passer. The setbacks, Archie Griffin, 45, Booby Clark, 42. The wide receivers, 85, Isaac Curtis. A surprise starter, 86, John McDaniel. There is the offensive line, the big tight end. Bob Trumpy, they are good. They protect Ken Anderson very well. Critical game for Cincinnati. They would fall back to a tie with Pittsburgh if they lose tonight. First play, Anderson not pulling around, and he goes quickly out to his wide receiver, Isaac Curtis, and Curtis out of bounds at the 32-yard line, has the first down. Defensively, the Oakland Raiders, well, it's a makeshift defensive front four or three, Alex. Yeah, it's, but they're good, and they do a good job, and the, the only problem with that front three is that they really can't rush that passer as much as I'd like them to run. They're, they're using the four-man uh, linebackers, and they do a good job roaming. Those are the linebackers. They perhaps the best part of this Oakland Raider unit. They play a 3-4 out of necessity. They lost a lot of people early in the year. We'll talk about it. First and 10, Cincinnati, their own 37-yard line handoff. Archie Griffin, big hole. And Griffin pops out to the 44-yard line. Archie Griffin, of course, restoring the ground game or helping to, along with the comeback of Booby Clark this year from injuries. Archie, double-time Heisman Trophy Award winner. As you look at him again right there, Frank called it a big hole, so it was. But Archie gets through very quickly, as you see. Fine, fine player. Ball at the 44-yard line, second down and three. Handoff, Archie Griffin. And the little one pounds to the first down, very close to it, out to around the 48-yard line. As you see quickly, Cincinnati mounting an offensive drive. Ever since these teams began playing in 1971, never has more than a touchdown separated them. They have had some beauties. You might recall the playoff of a year ago took place right here. Oakland had to pull everything they had out defensively to stop Cincinnati in that one, but they did. Cincinnati has never won here, ever. On first and 10. And he could not hold on. The attempt going out to John McDaniel, a surprise starter. I say surprise starter because McDaniel has not caught a pass this year. He only caught two last year. He's been a special teams man. The man we expected to see was Chip Myers, but he's not there. <laughs> There's Mr. Hands, Fred Boletnikov. Chewing his gum. He looks winning. like John Barrymore, doesn't he? What a profile. <laughs> well, if he looks like John Barrymore, you've got an entertainment scoop. Second down and 10. Ball at the 48-yard line. Electricity in the air here at Oakland. And a lot more electricity in Pittsburgh and Cleveland. Here comes Booby Clark. Flag is down. Charles Booby Clark has the first down. Down to the 40, but a flag is down. Bill Villapiano. Chases Clark out of bounds. Here's referee Tommy Bell. We're going to get a holding call against Cincinnati. And how many times we've seen that this year. It'll be marched off, and then we'll hear Tommy Bell with his announcement. Let's listen to Tommy's voice. He's got a beautiful voice, Frank. We have number 62 holding on the offense. Dave Latham, the right guard, number 62, holding Cincinnati. Second down, 20. John Madden, a competitor all the way. Had a brief try at this game. Back to Philadelphia. Hurt his knee. Been an incredibly successful professional coach. Ball is back at the 33-yard line of Cincinnati. No flag down. Anderson staying in the pocket. A lot of time. Good coverage downfield. And Anderson gets up to the 44-yard line. Monty Johnson collected him there. It'll be third down and 16. He had a lot of time, Alex. Well, that's that's the whole thing. They're getting some good blocking up front right now. And uh, anytime you get this kind of protection, 
you know, you're going to start completing passes, and, and we don't have to tell you what this guy can do as far as throwing the ball is concerned. Now, that's plenty of time, plenty of action, and, of course, they were covered. There was good, good coverage on the backfield that time. Third down, long yardage. Here comes the prevent defense. Charles Phillips comes in along with Neil Colsey. Phillips is 47. Colsey is 20. Chris Coslett is in a tight end for Cincinnati. He's number 88. Trumpy is out. They come, and Anderson is hit, but he gets it off. And Archie Griffin could not hold on. And Cincinnati will have to turn it over. Well, did you see big John Matusak on that one? Right. Oh, I sure did. And John Matusak, in his own way, is kind of an index to the way Al Davis puts together a team, together with his brilliant coach, John Madden, as we watch it again. Matusak didn't make it with Houston, where he'd been the first draft choice in all of pro football. He moved on to Kansas City, didn't make it there, didn't make it with George Allen, but he's the kind of retread project Oakland likes, and he's been playing well for Oakland. Indeed he has. Strong against the run. Pat McAnally will kick Neil Colsey deep for Oakland. Off the side of the foot of McAnally. And it takes a nothing bounce and moves out of bounds at the 20-yard line. And offensively, for the Oakland Raiders, Aurora will go up as Kenny Stabler, number 12, Leads out setbacks Mark Van Egan. He's having a tremendous year. Marv Hubbard, one of the engine open Raiders. Clarence Davis is in there. The other setback with a sore ankle. Two great wide receivers. Branson Bolitnikoff, offensive line, tremendous tight end. Number 87, Dave Casper. And there are the rest of them. A veteran unit, well coached. This team really does not know exactly how good they are. There's Matuzak. He has really helped them because they lost five defensive linemen before the start of the season. On first and ten. Mark Van Egan. Van Egan gets four. It'll be second down at six. He's out to the 24-yard line. Hit there by Bob Brown. Part of that front four, Alex. Well, Bob Brown, and as you say, and Coy Bacon's been around a long time. They've bounced around a lot of ball clubs, but they kind of solidified themselves here, and they're doing a good job with Ron Carpenter. And the other guy, I think, has really come on. And Howard, Jim LeClaire in the middle. They think he's all pro at Cincinnati. LeClaire is having a fine season. Reggie Williams is the rookie from Dartmouth who's been a happy surprise. Secondary on second down and six. They'll be tested. Stabler underthrows the attempt going to Fred Bolitnikoff. Fred Bolitnikoff needs two catches for 40 on the year. That would give him 10 straight years of 40 receptions or more. Cliff Branch with a 25 yard per catch average can go over a thousand with his first reception. That's not the moon. That's my man Otis. Number 60. The Bengals. He's, tur he's turned actor, you know, now. By the way, the Bengals secondary is largely veteran and very sound with Lamar Parrish, Ken Riley, Tommy Casanova, and the younger Marvin Cobb, another of those Southern California lads. Third down and six. Drop a Davis. And he gets about. A half a yard out of it. It'll be fourth down. Clarence Davis. Draw play fully no one. Corey Bacon hustling in there defensively to make the stop. And we will see punter Ray Guy. And dropping deep for Cincinnati. There's Ray Guy, number eight. He'll ripple it for you. Oakland's not too good covering their punts. They give up an average of 10 yards on every return. That's Lamar Parrish. He's back there with number 37, Tommy Casanova. We're just underway. No score at Oakland. Critical game for Cincinnati. An important game for Oakland. And Ray Guy knocks it to the moon. Oh, he hit it. Parrish. Falls 23-yard line. 55-yard punt. Morris Bradshaw hustling down there to make the stop. And we'll be returning to Oakland in just a moment. America stops shaving and starts grooming. Hey, Dad, when will I be old enough to groom like you? Well, right now, I could really go for a hot shower and a groom. A lot of people don't just shave anymore. Now they groom with the groomer from Sunbeam. It shaves clean and close with Sunbeam's thinnest shaving head ever. And it's the only shaver that can do this. Groom mustaches, beards, even trim hair. So stop shaving and start grooming with the Sunbeam Shave Master Groomer. Boy, that was a close groom. What does it take to start the wheels of American industry rolling? It takes machines, men, and money. That's where savings and loans come in. Money you save with us goes back into your community in the form of home loans. 
the savings and loan commitment to housing generates over $100 million a day for jobs, goods, and services. Help keep America rolling by having your savings account at your savings and loan. There's Bill Johnson. He's the head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals. This is his first year. Did a lot of coaching with the 49ers, a team that he played with and was an all-pro center for many years just across the bay. And he has turned in a superb job. Of course, the Cincinnati Bengals still have the great Paul Brown as the general manager. And what you're watching is a reflection of Paul Brown over the years. Archie Griffin. And Griffin gets out to about the 28-yard line. Call it six, it'll be second down and four. And there's a look from the Goodyear Blimp, Columbia. High overhead, our pilot is Joel Chamberlain. And would you believe our cameraman is? Archie Griffin. It's the truth. Our cameraman in the blimp is named Arch Griffin. Full house, sold out. It's being televised in the Bay Area. Second down and four. Anderson inside handoff, and it goes to Archie Griffin, and Griffin short of the first down by about a yard. It'll be third and short. Lonnie oh, Johnson over there to make the stop. Frank, they're really attacking the right place right now with that three-man line. You know, your big defensive linemen are kind of far apart, and if you're going to hit them anywhere, you should hit them right in the middle because you can take a guard and move that guy that's on the, the, the head of the center. You can take him one way or the other, and, of course, the back can read off that block. If, the, if they take him left, they can go right, and it's very hard for the bigger guys outside to come down and help them. So the linebackers have to be very active in the middle. Hey! All right, and for Cincinnati on third, less than a yard, Tony Davis, a rookie from Nebraska, replaces Archie Griffin for blocking purposes. Booby Clark gets the call. And I don't believe he made it. And Raider defense on the bottom. We'll see who was underneath, but it was Bill, Bill Piano who drove them back. Very and active Monty linebacker. Johnson, just like you said, Alex, yeah. they are active. We're going to get a measurement. A lot of fancy folks here in Oakland tonight. On the sidelines, we have Jim Garner of the Rockford Files. Jimmy Connors, great tennis star, is in the booth with us. Reggie Jackson's here, and you saw how much. That how much did not reflect how much Reg Giroux got from the Yankees. He might buy the stadium. <laughs> he may buy the league. First down, the ball is at the 33-yard line. Cincinnati and Oakland. Cincinnati. Should they end up in this tie with the Pittsburgh Steelers, they would lose the division. They can't get in on a wild card. That'll be either New England or Baltimore. Anderson has a man open. It's Cruffy, and he does not hold on, and he was wide open. Oh. Can't a linebacker on him, Howard. It won't work. You can't do it. Meanwhile, Trumpy has made many, many vital catches and difficult catches, and he has one laid right into him. Hard to believe he didn't hold on to that football. Atkinson over covering the wide receiver, Isaac Curtis, and he's a strong safety. He was over there helping out with Skip Thomas. And that left Monty Johnson all alone. And Villapiano. Second down and 10. We'll see that again. Ball at the 33-yard line. Second down, and it is John McDaniel. I have to assume, Frank, that John McDaniel was suddenly inserted into the starting lineup because of his speed edge over Chip Myers. Remember how he would go down on those punches? We look at him again. Beat everybody tremendously fast. There he is, third-year man out, out of, of Lincoln. Lincoln of Missouri. First down is at the 45-yard line. Nine minutes remaining in the first quarter. There is no score. Booby Clark. And Clark is right out to midfield. And Booby Clark has been having a tremendous year, his best year ever. He 610 yards coming into tonight. He really has. And Cincinnati started this season with two goals. A, restore their ground game, and the acquisition of Arch Griffin helped that, plus the comeback of Booby Clark from two seasons of injury. 
B, establish the pass rush. And Coy Bacon has been a vast help in that regard. Second down and five. Flags ball. Oakland will be offside. Archie Griffin turns a corner and breaks a tackle. Griffin gets the first down. He's at the 40-yard line of the Raiders. And this little man, they question whether or not he was big enough to handle it. He can handle it. 508 yards with a 4.5 average coming into the action tonight. 77-yarder last week for a touchdown. He does it in a way that surprises you. You don't really think he's accumulating the yardage he does. As for the little man nonsense, that myth was punctured a long time ago, and now it's punctured every year. Not just by Archie, but by guys like Greg Pruitt of Cleveland. Obviously, the penalty climb. I said last week, it was the week before that. For Archie Griffin. Coslett, motion. Go back, stay in for protection. We're going deep. Handle. Oh, and what a catch by John McDaniel. Now we know why he's in there. He turned around completely. The toughest thing a receiver will have to do. And came up with a perfect strike. And you saw Kenny Anderson using the plays as they come in from the bench, but keeping both backs in. It gave him time, and Cincinnati's on the scoreboard. Did 40 you, yards. Did you see who he beat? Willie Brown. Number 24, the veteran cornerback, Willie Brown, who for the last couple of years has been written off but keeps coming on again. In his time, he was, by consensus, the best in his prime, the best of cornerback in football. You're looking at Chris Barr, the rookie from Penn State. Former All-American soccer player there. Wow, and Chris Barr misses an important one. And no longer is the conversion automatic in pro football. They have been missed frequently throughout the league, and they have had a vital effect on many games. We'll be returning to Oakland in just a moment. The 1977 Thunderbird turned for takeoff. For 1977, a completely new Thunderbird idea takes wing. A new Thunderbird look. A new Thunderbird price. A new Thunderbird size. This trimmer Thunderbird was born for flight with a refined suspension system and wide stance. You'll feel its quick agility and the quiet luxury of its ride. But most surprising, this luxurious Thunderbird, exactly as you see it here, comes with a down-to-earth price of $54.34. A price that includes power steering, power brakes, automatic transmission, V8 engine, vinyl roof, radio, and more. The 1977 Thunderbird. Fly one. When America needs a better idea, Ford puts it on wheels. Saturday, the U.S.-U.S.S.R. Heavyweight Boxing Championship featuring Olympian John Tate and the man who twice beat Teofilo Stevens and Igor Vysotsky and the World Trophy Freestyle Skiing Championships Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Chris Barr will kick off for Cincinnati. Chris Barr missed the conversion. He probably still is in shock. Rick Jennings is deep, number 33. He's back there with Carl Garrett, number 31. 8.03 remaining in the first quarter. Barr hangs it high and long. And it'll be Jennings inside his own 10. And Jennings upended as he moves out over the 25-yard line. Let's go back and look at the time Ken Anderson had on this pass. Well, Tom McDaniels makes a spectacular catch in the corner, but look at all the time he has. Plenty of time to get into the pattern. And when you have that kind of speed and those kind of hands, that's going to happen when you give him enough time. And as Howard pointed out, Willie Brown, I don't know whether he anticipated help from his deep safety or not, but he didn't get it in any event. And John McDaniel made a sensational catch. First and ten for Oakland. Ball at their own 27-yard line. Staber. His big tight end, Dave Casper, and Casper short of the first down, written out of bounds, out around the 34-yard line, corralled there by Reggie Williams. Let's go back to that touchdown play again, gentlemen. You're looking at John McDaniel in isolation. And all this time, Anderson is getting the time we showed you and previously described. 
in the playoff game a year ago, and Cincinnati learned from this. Anderson never had the time. Number 83, Ted Hendricks, sacked him five times as he kept bursting past Booby Clark. Obviously, Cincinnati learned from that game. Second down and three. Stabler with his 179th completion, his best season in completions thus far in his career, and it's been a brilliant career. That was Clarence Davis. Again, short of the first down, moving out to the 35-yard line. It'll be third down and two. This is the second offensive series for the Steelers. The first time it was three downs and over. Now they only need short yardage. One of the good things about the Oakland team through the years, outstanding things really, has been its offensive line. Thus far tonight, in the brief offensive possessions they've had, they haven't moved Cincinnati. Third short yardage. First down, Oakland. And Clarence it. Davis is playing on a very sore ankle tonight. They did at that time, and I inadvertently said Steelers, of course. I mean, we've got the Steelers on our mind, folks. Uh, well, I think we're on their mind. Right now, I'll tell you, this telecast is presented by authority of the Oakland Raiders Football Club. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of the telecast without the express written consent of the Oakland Raiders and the National Football League is prohibited. First and ten for Oakland. Their own 40-yard line. Carl Garrett gets the call. And Garrett gets out to the 48-yard line. It'll be second down and three. Hit there by Marvin Cobb. Garrett is another of those retread projects Oakland likes to deal with. Garrett, of course, starting with the Patriots, showed great skills, but was disposed of for other reasons. Went to the Bears. Didn't stick there. Went to the Jets. His tenure there was short live. Here he is with Oakland, and he's been doing a good job for them. Has he packed his bags yet? Nope, he isn't leaving here. If you've just joined us, Cincinnati scored first. 40-yard touchdown pass. Anderson McDaniel, they lead 6 to nothing. Barr missed a conversion. Second down and three. Getting the call, Mark Van Egan. And hit there by Coy Bacon. Huston over there, Jim LeClaire, number 55. As the first down, he's in Cincinnati territory at the 48. Roy Bacon, great in the pass rush, and Alex, he's not bad against the run either. No, he's a real sturdy defensive lineman, and I can't understand why he's been peddled and traded so darn much, because he, he really does a fine job in there. As you can see right there, he handles himself pretty good. I don't know, he's been traded quite a bit. I don't understand it, Coy, and I, well, I'm he sure was you don't. Traded to San Diego for John Hadel. That wasn't bad. Hadel was the MVP that year. Charlie Joyner to San Diego this year. see the number but I saw the style that's his 39th reception oh, isn't, isn't that something he gets the first down one more and he will have 40 for the 10th consecutive year a remarkably gifted athlete he could have been a great ballet dancer He's built like serious ball at the 36 yard line first and 10 again we'll tell you of the importance Cincinnati has a 9-3 record Pittsburgh has a 9-4 Cleveland has a 9-4 Cincinnati could fall back into a three-way tie. If they wind up in a tie at the end of the season, Pittsburgh would win it all. Flag is down, Stabler is up. Prince does not hold on, but a flag is down in that area that usually generates a holding call. Ken Riley covering on that play. Branch got behind him. The snake underthrew it a little bit. There's your call. All right, here it is. This Cliff Branch. Actually had his vision impaired in trying to catch that ball. He is, as you know, a superb receiver. We talked at the very top of our show as we wait now for the official's call about his 20. Number 75 holding on the offense. John Bella, right tackle, Oakland holding. When you average better than 25 yards per reception, it's a rather vivid index. 9-3 oh. sprinter in That's high school, right. Howard, down at Worthington High in Houston. Well remembered down there, and of course on to Colorado, world-class spreader, as you said at the very top of the show, and he holds on. Penalty assessed, the ball is back at the 46-yard line. Clarence Davis. And look at Davis run. He gets a lot of it back inside the 30-yard line, where it'll be second down and a long three. That's the way the Oakland Raiders offensive line likes to work. They've got two brilliant pulling running guards 
in Upshaw and Beeler. And, of course, Shell and Vela are superb players, both. Clarence David just carrying number 37, Tommy Casanova, with him. Ball at the 29-yard line, second down and three. Carl Garrett comes in. He's in there with Pete Banaszak. Garrett 31, Banaszak is 40. We told you that Clarence Davis has a sore ankle. This is Garrett. Garrett has the first down. Garrett to the 25, and the much-traveled Carl Garrett, who says he's delighted to be with Oakland after tours in New England. Chicago, the Jets, last week, scored a touchdown here, and he said, I am home. <laughs> Hopefully, from his point of view. Bill There's Johnson. Bill Johnson. Wyatt Tittle and John Brody, two of the players that he coached with the 49ers, said they learned more football from him than any other man they ever worked with. Wide open. Dave Casper, touchdown. So quickly, Oakland has come back with its offensive fire. That's the beauty of Stadler. That's Stadler at his very best. And of course, Casper has, in his first starting year as tight end, has become absolutely exceptional. Great hands, great strength. I wonder if the decibel count just went up in Cleveland and Pittsburgh. Yeah. But well, that's why I like to watch Oakland. They're just a wide open ball, ball, ball club and can give you a good game all the time. They may lose, but they, they sure look good when they lose. Place kicking for Oakland. Earl Mann, you remember that name from Detroit? He was yes, cut there, indeed. went to Green Bay, and picked up in the eighth game when their Fred Steinfurt, their kicker from Boston College, had a pulled groin muscle and could not continue for the season. Earl Mann puts the Raiders out in front. So Oakland has struck quickly. It's the kind of game we anticipated. A lot of back offensive action, and we'll be returning in a moment. You know, it used to take 43 Marth Throne Beer baseball cards to get one Carl Ferrilla. So I was surprised when the light beer people called me to do this commercial. I mean, I do drink light beer, and it tastes great. It's got a third less calories than their regular beer, and it's less filling. But you know, I'm kind of worried, because if I do for light beer what I did for baseball, I'm afraid their sales might go down. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Service for your car. Sometimes you want it, sometimes you need it, but sometimes you don't. You'd rather just fill up and go. And that's why many Exxon dealers also provide self-service islands, so you can save time and money and still get Exxon quality. Exxon, with self-service for when you don't need help, and full service for when you do. Exxon products Dave Casper, there he is, Giffer, out of Notre Dame, and you'll be receiving an award from the Notre Dame Alumni Club tomorrow. You're going to love that affair. It's one of the best in the country, Giff. Imagine that. Notre Dame presenting an alumni award to anyone from USC. <laughs> All right, set to kick off is Ray Guy. Earl Mann does not kick off. Deep is Willie Shelby and Archie Griffin. Guy puts it in the end zone. Willie Shelby takes it out. And Shelby up to the 24-yard line. And let's go back and look at that pass to Dave Casper. And a little extracurricular activities before we do. Well, they told you that top of the show, Oakland, not terribly fond of Pittsburgh. They're not too happy of Cincinnati either. No tempers flared just for the moment. Football players do not make it as fighting. You no, they never beg your do part. anything but hurt their hands. They know that. You see very little fighting, as a matter of fact. No flags, no one out. First and ten for Cincinnati. They trail the Oakland Raiders 7-6. to 3.52 remaining in the first quarter. Frank Gifford, Howard Cosell, and Alex Harris. Ball at the 24-yard line. And there's some play action. A lot of time. Oh. There goes the booby part. And he's hit in a hurry by Willie Brown and shaken up. Got about a yard out of it. I think he probably had the wind knocked out of him. Well, you can believe he was shaken up. That was some hit. So there's the veteran Willie Brown with all of his guile and experience reading the play immediately and executing it. 
almost read his lips. I'm okay. Just let me collect it here for a moment. Let's go back and look at that touchdown to Dave Casper. Kenny Stabler finding Dave Casper wide open. Lots of time. Oh, great job of blocking. Thin point. And again, Casper. Well, they were trying to cover Casper with Reggie Williams, the linebacker. It just doesn't work. But you, the reason they get into that situation is they are have such great outside receivers, both teams, and they have got to try and double cover them. When you double cover both of them, you got to cover your tight end with somebody, and that's the linebacker. And you can really get stung. That was Casper's 48th reception on the year, by the way. He's really come into his own this year. Stan Fritz comes in for Booby Clark, second-year man out of North Carolina State, 192 yards on the year. He's wearing number 33. Second down and eight. Archie Griffin and the little man refuses to go down until he pushes out over the 30-yard line, hit there by John Matuzak, hustling over from his defensive end position. It's going to be third down and call it a four. Booby Clark just had the wind knocked out of him, gentlemen. He'll be back shortly. We are at box. Beautiful night. Oakland, Alameda, Alameda County Stadium. Temperature right around 50. No wind at all. Isaac Curtis, top of your screen on the third and four. Oh, and almost picked off by two Raiders. Bill Filipiano almost got there. And then Willie Hall, who played great football for Oakland, almost picked it off. He really has. Oakland using that three-man front, the so-called orange defense, has gotten great service out of its linebackers as you watch Filipiano here. <laughs> Quick to read, always venturesome. He could have breezed into an easy score had he held it. He likes to rely on his quickness, and he's got a lot of it. Pat Nakanelli will punt Neil Colsey at deep. Low kick, the kind you run back. And Colsey with a 49-yard line hit there by Glenn Cameron for Cincinnati. Next Monday night on ABC, we've got a good college game for you. The Liberty Bowl, Alabama against UCLA. The men of the Big Bear against the UCLA team that went down to the wire against USC, losing to them and thus losing their Rose Bowl bid. That makes the Liberty Bowl game a dandy. Be with us for that. All right, and you're watching an Alabama product, number 12, Kenny Stabler who has just put the Raiders ahead with a touchdown pass to his big tight end, Casper. Raiders get to 76. And a huge hole for Mark Van Egan. He gets out near the 40-yard line, close to a first down, just a little short. Tommy Casanova made the save. It'll be second and in inches. Watching the Raiders this year has been a very interesting procedure. Why? Because early on with Bob Hubbard as they come in to measure for the first down out for the year, the ground game wasn't working. And they had to rely strictly on Stabler in the pass and the great receivers. He'll be just a touch short. You see it there that much. But then, young Van Egan, out of Colgate, like Hubbard, began to come on very swiftly to the point where he's likely to pass the 1,000-yard mark and yards gained rushing. And Clarence Davis, despite some on-and-off injuries, began to play much more like himself. So the attack became more balanced, and the Oakland team grew better and better. How good they really are, we will find out in the playoffs. They played about the way they had to in a number of games to win, with scores closer than their superiority would suggest. At least they hope that's the situation, because they had some squeakers with Chicago and Green Bay. And as you said, Howard, they really don't know how good they are. This is Mark Van Egan. Came in tonight. 834 yards. He's tacking more on. He gets the first down. Not a thousand yard rushers this year. OJ Simpson, another incredible game yesterday yeah. against Miami, over 200 yards. Franco Harris is over a thousand. How about Walter Bates? Oh, what a day he had. 183 yards. You'll be seeing some of his runs on our halftime highlights. He's one of those players the offensive team likes to watch when they're off the field. I mean, the opposition offense. 
On first down, Saber hands off to Mark Van Egan. Van Egan inside the 35, close to the 34. It'll be second down and six with 115 remaining in the first quarter. Explosive offensive teams, both of these ball clubs. Can't not remind you often enough of the importance for this game for Cincinnati. Well, the beauty to Stabler, Frank, is that he's such a pinpoint passer, likes to operate in the 14 to 17 yard range, but can diversify and throw the bomb. Again, he has the time. He's going deep. And back there was yeah. the Litnikoff, and we're going to get a face guard, I think, against Lamar Parrish. think you'll find much of an argument on this call. That was a good call. The rough was right over there. I don't think Lamar would thought Belitnikoff would go on the fly. That's not his cup of tea. He's an underneath man, but he still has a lot of speed even in his 12th year. Let's look again. Judge for yourself. There has to be a legitimate effort on Lamar's part to play the ball. He's playing the man. Obviously, a face guard. Good call. Ball at the three-yard line. First and goal. We'll look at it again. You'll really see it here. Lamar is waiting for Blitnikoff to come in. That's why he's pushing him to the outside, and he doesn't come in. Well, that would have been designed to come in. That was a good play uh, idea, too, because it was second down. It could have been a run, and the linemen weren't really, you know, going for the quarterback. It was a lovely play. Good play. Hey, uh, Alex, Cincinnati doesn't start pressuring a little bit. For that matter, if Oakland doesn't start pressuring, we're going to have a basketball score tonight. Stabler, wide open. Casper, second touchdown. Fooled everybody. The snake put it in, took it out. Casper was all alone. He is just a great quarterback. No question about it. That's 25 touchdown passes on the year. He's all alone, the league leader in that department. Well, first down, first down and goal. You think he might run one time, but he goes right back and throws the ball, and no one's around the receiver. That's Casper's eighth touchdown of the year. His 40th reception. So they can. Hits you on the outside. They can go with the big tight end. Earl Mann on for the conversion. And Mann extends the Oakland Raiders lead over the Cincinnati Bengals to 14 to 6. Here it is again. It really looked like they're <laughs> laying down, don't they? They don't want to play the Steelers. I have in front of me a half page ad in the Oakland Tribune of yesterday. Says, dear Oakland Raiders, we can't blame you for wanting to lie down Monday night. By sleeping through your game with Cincinnati, you probably won't have to face the Super Bowl champion Pittsburgh Steelers in the playoffs. Pleasant dreams. Sincerely. And the ad was taken out by a family restaurant chain in the state of Pennsylvania. There he is, Dave Casper. What a night he has. And setting it up to, to boot is... Ray Guy, we look once again at Casper. Remind you, uh, two weeks from tonight, we were in air a moment ago, will be the Liberty Bowl. That is, of course, going to be a beauty. UCLA and Alabama. Guy hits it and hits another beauty. Lily Shelby will bring it up. And Shelby. Humbled all over the place, but he gets out to the 19-yard line. Oakland, extremely fired up. <laughs> That's what I was just whispering to Alex. Just remember the way we opened the program? If they win tonight, everything they play in the playoffs will take place right here. Uh, I was Unless, just, of course, they get to Pasadena. I was just kidding you guys. Can't you guys think of <laughs> Joe? They rarely ever lose in the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum, the Oakland Raiders. First down, Booby Clark back in the game. Archie Griffin. And he bounces off tacklers out to the 21-yard line. Gain of two, second down and eight. Finally corralled by Willie Hall. Seconds ticking away here in the first quarter. Willie Hall, we spoke up a moment ago. He was second-round draft pick of New Orleans in 72, and he, they got him as a free agent last year, Howard. That's right. And he has fitted into that defense just perfectly, that 3-4 alignment. They will not get the playoff. That's the end of the first quarter. And 
Oakland with two touchdown passes. Stabler to Casper leads the Cincinnati Bengals 14 to 6. Bank America, today's way to pay presents. You type presents, roasted pheasants, electric choo choo trains, fur line kittens, fluffy kittens, sweet candy canes, ski lessons, toboggans, bright lighting for the yard, cocktail glasses, airline passes, with Bank America, quick healers, three wheelers, vacations in the sun, sledding, skating, party making, having fun. Bank America, Bank America, today's way to pay. United Airlines makes me feel like the boss. They know I'm a busy woman. So now they've given me more carry-on space than any other airline, which I prefer to think of as carry-off space. I grab my case, an hat from above, completely unsquashed. I get my clothes, free of wrinkles, from the closet. I whisk my suitcase from United's brand new luggage racks, and the boss is on her way. Fly those friendly skies of United. Where you are the boss. A center has to get off the line of scrimmage in order to build a reputation. That block was a great moment for me. But let me tell you about some other great moments. The Campfire Girls are in the building business, people building. They help young ladies build their minds, their bodies, and their hearts. You enable this development of youth to continue when you support the United Way. Thanks to you, it works for all of us, the United Way. Right, girls? Right. right. <laughs> The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. We're back. Oakland, Alameda, Alameda, that's tough to say in a row. Oakland, Alameda, County Stadium, full house. There's a full house in Pittsburgh, a full house in Cleveland, and they have to be sweating because the Raiders have a 14 to 6 lead over Oakland. Second down and eight. Ball just over the 20 yard line. Flags all over the area. And a whistle goes to stop the action. As we await the call on this, Frank, I've just gotten word that the baseball commissioner, Bowie Kuhn, has voided the Atlanta Braves signing of Gary Matthews, formerly of the Giants, as a free agent and declared Gary to be a free agent again. Now, that's all I've gotten thus far. Can't fill you in on the further details. Those of you who follow baseball closely will remember that there were stories of tampering. Yeah, false start on number 76. On the offense. Okay, there's the call. Stories of tampering with Matthews by the Braves prior to the re-entry draft's execution. You heard the call. Vernon Holland, false start, right tackle for Cincinnati. Second down, 13. Ball at the 16-yard line. Anderson. Flag is down as McDaniel breaks into the clear. He has great speed. McDaniel inside the 40 of Oakland, but a flag is down. He really has tremendous speed. You got another glimpse of it there. You saw it when he was the receiver on the long touchdown bomb by Kenny Anderson. And we look again. A holding call has been called against Oakland naturally declined, so this play stands. McDaniel takes it down to the 38-yard line. And let's look at it from the blimp. Maybe you can pick up the holding. Our cameraman Archie Griffin up there working on it. Over on the left side. In any event, penalty against Oakland declined Cincinnati. Cincinnati at the 38-yard line of Oakland first and ten. I think it let's look at the catch again. John McDaniel. Chip Myers and Troop. He normally plays there, was considered questionable because of an injury, but he's been questionable every week. Live action, play action again by Anderson, and he is nailed. Big number 72, John Matuzak, and he has found himself here at Oakland. Oh, he really I think John, okay. I don't know what they do with these retread commodities here, but they suddenly all come to life. He was out of Tampa University, and as I said earlier, the number one choice in the whole pro football draft the year he graduated. Well, he's kind of a crazy guy, isn't he, off the field? They, maybe they just leave him alone. There it is. Top of your screen, you see him roaring in there, working against Vernon Holland. Shakes him off. Four years ago, as Howard said, the first player picked in the draft. Didn't work out at Houston, went to Kansas City, 
Tried it there a couple of years. Tried Washington earlier in the year. George Allen let him go. And now he's playing great football for Oakland. On second down, 20. Overthrown, intended for Isaac Curtis. It'll be third down, long yardage. Anderson, 5 of 10, 114 yards. Came into tonight's game, not with the best percentage of his career, about 55%. He's usually up there around 59 or 60. As a matter of fact, in 74 and 75, he was the best passer in all of football. According to the manner in which they're rated, that's say, true. In but a very Frank, complex way they measure the quarterbacks. This year, with the running that he's gotten from Griffin and Booby, he's been able to mix up his offense much more effectively. Third and 20. Deep drop. And he hangs it up, and he has a man open. And we're going to get another face guard call, I think. It's John McDaniel. And it looked to be the same call we found earlier against Lamar Parrish. Well, I'll tell you, that McDaniel has been a 10 strike as an insertion into the starting lineup by Bill Johnson. Let's hear the call. Pass interference. Pushing. Let's hear the call. <laughs> on the defense, defensive pass interference. He went out of bounds on the same place he fired. It's first down on the one-yard line, Cincinnati Bengals. George Atkinson, the guilty Oakland Raiders. So Cincinnati on a third down and 20 winds up with a first and goal at the one-yard line. We told you these teams were explosive. Well, hang around. You've seen nothing yet. They really get it on. Uh, banging in for the touchdown, Stan Fritz. And that one conversion missed earlier by Chris Barr looms very large. It will loom larger as the night progresses, undoubtedly. And in Pittsburgh, there is renewed tension. They were breathing more easily for a moment when Oakland assumed an eight-point lead, but now it's down to one. See, I told you guys so. I wasn't kidding you. Cincinnati, of course, has the New York Jets next week. Pittsburgh has Houston. Cleveland has Kansas City. But they need help. And this time, Chris Barr, the All-American soccer player from Penn State, hits. So we have 13.50 remaining in the first half. That's the story. Introducing the 1977 Ford Granada. I'm back, sweetheart. Who are you? Well, I'm... Get out of my Cadillac. Where's my Granada? Oh, my sweet, my pet. No! My... Oh, 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 sorry. I thought this was my Cadillac. Well, it's my Mercedes, you, you animal. Now, where were we? What are you, some kind of weirdo? Uh, no, uh, wrong car. Get out of here. One way to tell Granada from Cadillac and Mercedes is its sticker price. When America needs a better idea, Ford puts it on wheels. I'm Walt Garrison, and I don't smoke, but I still enjoy tobacco, smokeless tobacco, like Skull here. Just a pinch between my cheek and gum, and I get full tobacco pleasure. And since I don't light up, I can use it doing almost anything. So go smokeless with Skull, Copenhagen, and Happy Days Men. The tobaccos you don't have to smoke to enjoy. Go! We're back in Oakland. We'll pause five seconds and allow our stations to identify themselves, but don't go away. Chris Barr has it on the tee. Deep for Oakland. Number 33 is Rick Jennings, and Carl Garrett is number 31. Rick Jennings. See it open up as Rick Jennings gets all the way out to the 49-yard line. The flag went down over there. I don't know whether it was to mark the out-of-bounds or a possible penalty.
Ball now being marked at the 46-yard line, and a flag is down as we look back a moment ago to the touchdown by Fritz. Here's the call. And it goes against Cincinnati again as you look at the touchdown. A tripping call has been called against Cincinnati. It'll be marched off. So there's Oakland right back. Couldn't ask for a more exciting game. We have a personal foul. Tripping on number 10 on the defense. First down and 10, Oakland Raiders. Well, Chris Barr, the kicker, the soccer player from Penn State, was guilty of tripping. First and 10, 35-yard line. Oakland leading 14 to 13. It's going to be that way. I have a feeling all night. Here comes the reverse. Kurt Davis. What a block by George Beeler. Did you see that one again? Oh, yeah. Terrific block by him. Really level. We see it on replay. Watch number 64. He's been doing that for eight years. One of the great offensive guards in football. You'll see him come out, number 64. 63 is Upshaw. That's the other guard. You see that? What a fine pair. Lord Beeler and Gene Upshaw. Oddly with the same numbers as Kramer and Thurston in the glory days of the pack. Second down, a long two at the 27. This is Clarence Davis. Reggie Williams collects Clarence Davis. And Reggie Williams is quite a story. Ron Pritchard, their outside linebacker, went out early in the year with knee surgery. And Reggie Williams is one of the reasons this team for a long while is a top defensive team in the AFC. He's a rookie out of Dartmouth. You know what the tripping was all about, you guys? Did you get that? You know what was on? Look at that. You know who that is? That's Chris Barr tripping, the, the kicker. Can you imagine? He doesn't know any better, though. He figures anything he wants to do, he can do on a football field. Yeah, he was a great soccer player. I guess that's one of the tactics. Three times All-American. Third down and six. Stabler has a month. And it's almost picked off. It was intended. Flag is down. It was intended for Blitnikoff, and Ken Riley almost took it. Flags all over the area tonight. I think this call will be against Blitnikoff. You got it. Blitnikoff and Riley got all tangled up down there. They don't catch the wily old wide receivers with 12 years' experience very often. Not a question of whether they do it; it's how they do it. Options being expressed there to defensive captain Ron Carpenter, number 70. Randy, well, we'll listen. We have number 25, offensive pass interference on the offense. Penalty is declined. It will be fourth down. Ooh, ooh. ooh. It's declined, and that is going to bring out Earl Mann. And let's look at it again. There it is. He really tried oh, yeah. to stop him. Now they're putting in Errol Mann, and look at the distance of this kick. I wonder if Errol can kick at this distance with any degree of regularity, Frank. Well, in his past, he has. He's been around a long time, however. 48-yard attempt. No good. See, Tommy Bell indicates no good. Now we'll be returning to Oakland in just a moment. This engine is weaving its way through the mountains of Oregon and pulling the incredible weight of 13 cars with a strap woven from Flex 10 tire cord, a Goodyear exclusive. Tire cord is the main reinforcing agent in a tire. Flex 10 tire cord is made from a man-made aramid fiber that is pound for pound stronger than steel. Tensile strength is only one of the many performance properties in a tire, but it's one of the most important. Flex 10, the tire cord of the future from Goodyear.
Stanley Tools and Hardware have been helping people do things right for over a hundred years. And today, people are depending on Stanley quality more than ever. They're doing things themselves to save money. They're also discovering that doing things with your own two hands adds something to life that money can't buy. Stanley, we want to help you do things right. And making our home beautiful is doing things right. Stanley Tools, Hardware, and Drapery Hardware. We want to help you do things right. Beautiful shot from our Goodyear blimp, Columbia, looking down at the Oakland Alameda County Stadium. Capacity crowd, and even though it's being televised in the area, it certainly appears as if they're all here. Two weeks from tonight, don't forget the Liberty Bowl, and that's going to be a beauty. UCLA is going to tie into the Crimson Tide, Alabama, two weeks from tonight. A lot of offense, like that Dankwood, UCLA. Five football players. What do you mean they're going to tie into the Crimson Dive? The Big Bear won't like that. Well, uh, then Alabama's going to tie into the Bruins of UCLA. <laughs> First and ten, Cincinnati. Ball at their own 31 yard line. They trail by one. Booby Clark. Let the Booby break that tackle. And he's out close to a first down over the 40 yard line on his own. Jack Tatum fell off. Oh, Howard, excuse me, Frank. Otis, Otis Sistrong does a fine job here, but the only thing he forgets is he misses the, the tackle, really. Boy, Tatum missed Come on, one, Otis. Too. He does a good job. He holds his man up, comes right to the outside. Just one more step, Otis. Come on, baby. That's Tatum missing there. Atkinson saved him. And that you'll rarely see. Tatum is one of the best one-on-one -on -one tacklers in all of football. You think Hollywood's hurt, Otis? The first down is short of the 42-yard line in Cincinnati. Play action. Anderson fires under pressure, intercepted money. Johnson has it. And the big linebacker pulls back inside the 45 yard line of Cincinnati. And that time, Oakland put the footsteps around Kenny Anderson. The first time tonight. Remember last year in the playoffs, it was pressure upon Anderson that won the game for Oakland. But Tuzak was in there, Sistrunk was in there. And that produces interceptions. The 12th interception of the year for Oakland. There's Matuzak, and watch Otis from the outside. He must have heard me because he's really putting the pressure on now. Atta boy, that's the way to go. First down, Oakland. Say that. They need 14 to 13. They're inside the 45 yard line of Cincinnati. No contact made. Van Egan wrestled to the ground, out around the 40 yard line. It'll be second down and six. Let he can shake it up. Well, he's not the biggest guy in the world, but he's a gutsy runner. He puts that head down and bangs in, as you just saw him do. Let's take a look at Jim LeClaire. Middle linebacker, in isolation. LeClaire's the guy who had the unenviable task of succeeding Bill Berge, regarded by some as the best of all in football. But LeClaire has come into his own this year, has tremendous range. As that play evidence. He's playing on a very sore ankle tonight. But when you get to the end of the season, you play on just about anything. All right, second down and six. Banizak comes in for Van Egan. Who's standing up on the sidelines. Fires Davis. And Davis hit out around the 38. Makes a couple more on his own to the 35. That's Monty Johnson, the man who made the interception. Hi, Monty, from Nebraska. What a football player he's turned out to be. He's developed every year. Van Egan, apparently all right. We've been informed, just the wind knocked out of him. We've seen that already tonight. That's the kind of game we've had. Third down, less than a yard, as Clarence Davis battles to the 35. The two tight ends come in. That means Warren Bankston, he's number 46. And Dave Casper, who has Oakland's two touchdowns, both from Ken Stabler, number 87. Manizak, he has the first down. Boy, this has been a great football player over the years. It's unbelievable, Oakland. Frank. He's been around, what, 11 years? Every year they're ready to write him off. There was a time when it looked like he'd be dropped, but the roster reduction, because he was good on special teams, meant that 
Oakland would keep him instead of Charlie Smith at the time they let Charlie Smith go. He always goes in on short yarded situations, or nearly always, and always around the goal line, and he, in your words, slithers in, Mr. Gifford. He finds it. He has four touchdowns on the year. Last year, of course, his best year ever, 670 yards, and he did that filling in. One first down. Wide open to tight end Castro. And Cincinnati is going to have to do something about Castro. They really are. Reggie Williams again on the coverage and on the tackle, but it's a first down for Oakland. He's a bull. He's now up to 50 receptions on the year. I'll Not tell you, too bad. I will say it again. That's what happens when you have receivers like Oakland on the outside. Branch and Boletnikoff, they have almost got to be double covered. If you're not getting your pass rush, you've got to cover them. Or they're going to beat you. So that means the tight end is going to run free. Carl Garrett's in, number 31. Gets a call in a tremendous hole. Gets second, seven yards. Down around the 13-yard line. It's going to be second down, a long three. Get there by Tommy Casanova. A lot of time left in this, the second quarter. More than nine minutes, 9.48 and counting down. 14 to 13, the Raiders over the Bengals. There's Booby Clark. He had the wind knocked out of him early on in the first quarter. Van Egan suffered the same thing. He's still on the bench. We have Garrett, 31, Banizak, 40. Those are the setbacks. This is Banizak, short of the first down. He had to get to the 10-yard line. It'll be third down and short. Ron Carpenter. Pushing Banazak back. And in comes the short yardage offense. Bangston, 46. Comes in to supplement the blocking. Bangston, out of Tulane, has been around eight years. Was once, once with Pittsburgh. He's another of those retread Oakland operations. He was the Steelers' second round pick at 69. I bet they're pulling for him tonight. Big hole, Banizak gets the first Ooh. down. Down around the seven-yard line, it'll be first and goal. Well, they're really blocking up front right now. Hey, they're blowing them out. They've got the equipment up there to do it with. We've talked about Dalby at center and the two guards, Dealer and Upshaw and the two brilliant tackles, Shell and Bella. They've got the size, the speed, the mobility, the experience. They're enormous along that offensive line. First and goal. Ball at the seven-yard line. Garrett. Oh, and look at Peter out in front. Garrett down inside the four-yard line, and boy, George Beeler just crushed a defensive back. I love to see them run those sweeps because, to me, that's always been the most beautiful single offensive play in football as we look at it again. Yes. Well, it was number 20, Lamar Parrish, that George Peeler buried. That's a tough job for those cornerbacks to come up and face those guards and try and turn that play in. What was it Mr. Lombardi said, Giff? Don't talk to me about trick formations. You block better, you tackle better, you win. Banizak upended inside the one by Tommy Casanova. It'll be third down. Bo Harris. Over there helping Casanova. Tommy Casanova, a fine athlete from LSU, saved the touchdown. Bo Harris collecting the legs, and Tommy Casanova driving him back to keep him out of the end zone. Now Clarence Davis comes back in, number 28. He's in there with Banizak, number 40. Third down and goal, less than a yard. I. Davis was turned back at about the one foot line. Well, wow. 57 Williams and 55 Leclerc. And What's Franco Harris yelling right now, Howard? What's Lynn Swan yelling right now? What's Rocky Blyer yelling right now? They're going to go for it on fourth down. And that's what Pittsburgh wants them to do, too. The but score 14 to 3, open. Another tense and troubled moment for a coach who's always, it seems, tense and troubled. John Mack. Banizak, he's got it. Fifth touchdown of the year. 
That's the guy who does the job close in there. Seems to me he's been doing it forever. 11 years this man's been around at the University of Miami. And he extends the Oakland Raiders lead. <laughs> well, he hit it right on the head. I think over the years they're always looking to replace this man, but they start counting up the things that, that he can do. And, well, he could be on the special teams. He's a good receiver. And he just scored for Oakland. And here's Earl Mann for the conversion. And it's good. Oakland Raiders out in front of the Cincinnati Bengals, 21 to 13. We have seven minutes remaining in the first half in this very crucial game. What a beautiful way to spend a vacation. This is paradise. Some of the most romantic hideaways in all the world are only hours away in a Boeing jetliner. Of course, some people have everything right in their own backyard. But if you don't, and you could use a little romance in your life, get hold of your travel agent. And get on a Boeing jetliner. There's a whole world out there waiting for you. Roses are red, violets are blue. Light beer from Miller, I love you. You've got a third less calories than the regular beer. And really are less filling, which is something to cheer. But what I like above all the rest is the way you taste, you are the best. Yes, blue is the violet and red is the rose. And if you don't believe me, I'm going to break your nose. Like beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. An aerial view of some 53,000 plus fans here in Oakland. Ray Guy has set it up to kick off to Willie Shelby of the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, Oakland leading the Bengals 21 to 13. Short kick by Ray Guy, who's been putting it in the end zone. And is taken there by Stan Fritz. And Fritz gets out over the 30-yard line. And to give you an idea how this game has gone, in terms of possession, and Oakland <laughs> seemingly is holding on to that ball a little longer than Cincinnati. If you thought so, you're right. They've had it 13 and a half minutes to Cincinnati's nine and a half minutes. And here's the touchdown again. You just saw a close-up on the sidelines of Banasak with that tough, determined cut of the jaw. Almost, but not quite, lantern jaw. <laughs> First and ten. Ball at the 33-yard line. Frank Gifford and Howard Cosell, Alex Karras were watching a good one. Anderson and wide open is Isaac Curtis. He dropped the ball, and I don't believe it was blown dead, but a Bengal hustles in there, number... Well, who has it? Cincinnati. Cincinnati has the ball, trying to find out who got it. As we Dave Lapham. As we look at it again, you see how quickly Kenny Anderson can come back. And at this stage of the season, you all know about Cincinnati. They're a resilient team with the weapons to come back immediately. Boy, nobody could find it until finally Lapham did. First and ten, Cincinnati. Ball just over their own 46-yard line. Archie Griffin gets the ball and gets a couple of yards out close to the 50. Call it the 49. It'll be second down and eight. We had the Bengals earlier on a Monday night this year. You fans will recollect the first half, Los Angeles was all over them. Though they only had a 6 to nothing lead at halftime, the second half, the Bengals came out and wiped out the Rams. By the way, appear to be red hot at the moment in the wake of that 59 to nothing thumping of the Falcons. Second down. Ball at the 49 yard line. Second down and eight. Anderson right back with the same play. And this time he uses John McDaniel. I'll tell you that McDaniel made an amazing catch there, Alan. Absolutely sensational. He not only does he have speed, he has great hands and he can get up in the air. He is having some night. Kenny Anderson working over on Skip Thomas, who is one of the highly respected cornerbacks. Here it is again. McDaniel. Here's Skip Thomas. He gets in there. Late Hendricks helps out, but it's first and ten. Cincinnati, 33-yard line of Oakland. 5-10 on the clock, and it's moving towards the end of the half. Booby Clark, and Booby Clark is 
upended by number 83. That's Ted Hendricks, and just about his first call of the night. The right. flag is down. And that's what I've been wondering about, a key. If there is a key for Cincinnati, which happens to be trailing by eight at the moment. Motion call is going to go against Cincinnati. Oh, look at that crowd. They love their football out here, and they have every reason to because this has been an incredible string of victorious years for the Raiders. Eight divisional titles in nine years. And here's the call. We have number 74, illegally in motion on the offense. The penalty is declined. It will be second down. That's the shuttling guard for Cincinnati, Glenn Bujnak. And that's 74. John Madden. And the point I was making is if there is a key for Cincinnati, as I emphasized before, it's the fact that they've been able to keep Hendricks off Kenny Anderson's back. Second down and eight. The ball inside the 32 of the Oakland Raiders. A little dinky-do. It fools no one. A what? That was kind of a half draw. Anderson runs by the setback Booby Clark, reaches back and gives it to him. A dinky-do, eh? And that one will go back in the old file cabinet. He used to do that to Murray and Motley. I remember seeing newsreels. <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> third down. There's a loss of a yard. It'll be third and nine. Chip Myers comes in, and we were worried, wondering about him, but he's in the action now. Number 25. Like the bottom of your screen. Now out of your picture. Here goes John McDonough. Three wide receivers, one setback. Oh, and at this time, sure hands. Isaac Curtis could not hold on. And that time, Teddy Hendricks did get to Kenny Anderson, just after Kenny released the ball. The mad stork, they call Hendricks. In 1970, when Baltimore won the championship, Hendricks was with them and was, I think, popularly regarded as the best defensive player in the entire league. Okay, Chris Barr is going to attempt a 50-yard field goal. He was a second-round draft pick. He has plenty of foot. He's had a couple over 50 already this year. Marvin Cobb is holding. Off to the left. No good. So Oakland will have good field position. They take over at the line of scrimmage. That's the 32-yard line, and that's our story. Oakland 21, Cincinnati 13. I mentioned the Los Angeles Rams a moment ago, folks. Don't forget, the Saturday night, the wind-up of this season's Monday night football, even if it is on a Saturday night, with the Rams against the Lions. The Giants upset the Lions yesterday, played a fine game in the process, but the Lions have been good enough to challenge such as the Minnesota Vikings, to whom they lost by a bare one point earlier on in the season. And the Rams think this is their year. On first and ten, Stabler has a man wide open. It's the speedster Branch. And Cliff Branch had the respect of Ken Riley, who was laying off about seven yards. And who slipped. You talk about great play selection tonight, Frank. I think that Stabler, no question about it, is doing a fine job at quarterback. And that particular play right there, you think he's going to run, but he throws the ball, he, he passes the ball on second down and short yardage, and it really crosses that defense up. And I like it, too, Alex. He's calling his own. I think the quarterback almost has to call his own, although they very few have done it anymore. First of all, if he calls it himself, he feels responsible for it. It makes a big difference. On first and ten. From Cincinnati, 48, a flag is down as Van Egan is back in the game and gets to the 44. It'll be a gain of three, second down and seven, but a flag is down. While we await the call on this one, it seems to me, Alex, that illegal motion against Oakland. By the way, that catch by Cliff France, his first of the night, takes him over 1,000 yards again this season. He did it back in 1974. He has ripped off an incredible amount of you know, touchdowns, 32 John, in three years. John Matusek is an interesting idea, and I think what happened to him out here is they gave him a pet rock for his birthday, you know? A pet every, what? Yeah, a pet rock. Every morning he takes it off for a drag. He's very happy out here. Did you get that, Steve? I'm sorry. I'm not sure I followed that. That was Cliff Branch illegally in motion for Oakland. First down, 15. 
walks off, gets a bunch of it back. <laughs> On that little turn, and he is virtually unstoppable. Game after game, year after year. I was saying about Stabler, Alex and Frank, the thing about Kenny now is his total confidence in himself, Frank. It shows. Well, he should with that arm. Well, the year they tried you out at quarterback, I thought... Well, I had total confidence. <laughs> It'll be second down at six. The ball at Cincinnati's 43-yard line. 2.45 remaining in the first half. Another slide goes down as Carl Garrett drives the right side. Far short of the first down. Offended at the 42-yard line. It'll be a gain of one, but a flag is down at the line of scrimmage. Lots of laundry action tonight. Another motion call, again, against Oakland. Now the Bengals have a little bit of a decision. It's third and four, the way it is now. Could have been one of the guards. Might, might have been on George, on, uh, George Beeler. It looked like they moved, trying to get the jump before first Beeler was coming out ahead of that play. Here's the call. 64 was illegally in motion on the offense. Yeah, George Beeler just takes a little quick jump here. There, you, you can see it just a little bit there. That's all it needs, though. That's all you have to do. So it'll be second down and 10. Ball resting at the 48 yard line. Branch, Boletnikov, both to the right. The tight end, Casper, top of your screen, number 87. Carl Garrett, left side. And Garrett down around the 41 yard line, where it's going to be third down and four. Gary Burley hustled over there, number 67, for Cincinnati to make the stop. He's been a nice find for Cincinnati this year. Picked a year ago, was out last year with injuries from Pittsburgh, where Johnny Majors will be no longer. Two-minute warning is coming up. And when we return to Oakland, it will be a third down and four for the Oakland Raiders at the 42-yard line of Cincinnati. The size reductions of some 77 cars are making news. Time says an amazing shrinking act. Newsweek calls it the big scale down. Well, the size changes are significant. For example, the Ford LTD now has a longer wheelbase and is longer and wider than Chevrolet Caprice or Impala. In fact, the Ford LTD is now about the same size as the Cadillac DeVille. And LTD has more trunk space, is a little wider, even has more hip and shoulder room than the Cadillac, and of course Chevrolet. Yet LTD is priced not like the Cadillac, but comparably equipped. The Ford LTD is sticker priced like a downsized Chevrolet. So this year, when you pay a full-size price, make sure you get a full-size value, like Ford LTD. It has the full size of a Cadillac, yet it's priced like a downsized Chevrolet. When America needs a better idea, Ford puts it on wheels. Ah, they speak with but right, Mike our colleague here in Oakland. They like you in Oakland, Howard. We have some incredible bowl games coming up. And we're going to be telling you about them a little later on. Of course, two weeks from tonight, the Liberty Bowl, Alabama and UCLA. Super games coming up. Coach Terry Donahue in his very first season, 9-1-1 one, and one with UCLA. We can discuss that 1-1. One, one. Third down and four for Oakland. Fabler goes to the air. Fires over the middle and is Cliff Branch. He has the first down inside the 35-yard line. Ken Riley with him all the way, but the snake zipped it in there. He really did. We've got a minute 46 to go in the half, counting down. Remember this. Nobody, but nobody, works the two-minute clock better than Kenny Stabler at the quarterback position. He is an absolute master. He has three timeouts, as does Cincinnati. Belitnikov, Branch, both go to the top of your screen. Branch on the inside. Motion man is Garrett. 
David goes with the screen. Van Egan. Van Egan got a little anxious. He had blockers in front of him. Cut back inside and a super defensive play by Reggie Williams. That was a super defensive play. And he got past Reggie. He had nothing but open territory ahead of him, Alex. I sure wish he would have pulled up and let the blockers go out. And Gene Upshaw was right in front of him. And he, I know, was upset because he had Reggie Williams in his sights. Watch number 63. Now, if you hang right there, Van Egan, go to the outside. You got a bunch of yards. That's what Frank would have done. I probably wouldn't have been that close. Well, that would have been better. It's going to be second down and eight. Stabler uses one of his time, times out. He has two remaining. Another reminder, folks. Monday night football this Saturday night from the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan. The Los Angeles Rams against the Detroit Lions. Rams in the playoff, of course, but seeking to achieve as we look at that magnificent Greeny, Otis system. Alex he, Garrison. He used to be an old Ram. Matter of fact, they got him from the Rams some time ago. Do we congratulate <laughs> the Rams, by the way? Oh, so, uh, let's congratulate all six teams that have made the playoff spots two. thus far. There are two unsettled. We've discussed tonight's game and its impact at some length. And, of course, the Eastern Division of the NFC is unsettled. Boy, and what that wild card has done to the races of football. Second down and eight. Stabler will go on top. Flag is down as Carl Garrett gets close to a first down, but again, the flag is down. Rather, Mark Van Egan Alex, as the receiver. Call is back in the holding area. And that's indeed what it is. Holding against Oakland. Erase that one. 63. We heard that all the way up. Gene Upshaw. Number 63, a view from our Goodyear blimp. Magnificent night, full moon, temperature relatively mild, and a huge capacity crowd on hand. Let's see if we can we can see the holding. No, no, you can't. See. <laughs> on the offense. Yeah, we missed the name. We heard it before. Gene Upshaw, number 63, guilty of holding. It'll be second down, about 19. The ball now at the 42-yard line of Cincinnati. Score once again. Oakland, 21. Cincinnati, 13. Must game almost for Cincinnati. And Cliff Branch makes a dazzling catch short of the first down. He had all day, all night, and could have had all year to throw that ball. He is getting the time. Well, look again. Just watch. This is unbelievable. Well, look at Dalby, 50. 63 is Upshaw. 64 is Beeler. And they protect their man. And Stabler goes with another timeout. And UCLA. Super games coming up. Coach Terry Donahue in his very first season. 9 1 and 1 with UCLA. We can discuss that 1 1. Third down and four for Oakland. Stabler goes to the air. Fires over the middle and it's Cliff Branch. He has a first down inside the 35-yard line. Ken Riley with him all the way, but the snake zipped it in there. He really did. We got a minute 46 to go in the half, counting down. Remember this, nobody, but nobody works the two-minute clock better than Kenny Stabler at the quarterback position. He is an absolute master. He has three timeouts, as does Cincinnati. Belitnikoff, Branch, both go to the top of your screen. It's Branch on the inside. Motion man is Garrett. Stabler goes with the screen. Van Egan. Van Egan got a little anxious. He had blockers in front of him. Cut back inside, and a super defensive play by Reggie Williams. That was a super defensive play, and he got past Reggie. He had nothing but open territory ahead of him, Alex. I sure wish he would have pulled up and let the blockers go out. And Gene Upshaw was right in front of him. He, I know, was upset because he had Reggie Williams in his sights. Watch number 63. Now, if you hang right there, Van Egan, go to the outside. You got a bunch of yards. That's what Frank would have done. I probably wouldn't have been that close. Well, that would have been better. It's going to be second down and eight. Stabler uses one of his time times out. He has two remaining. 
Another reminder, folks. Monday Night Football this Saturday night from the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan. The Los Angeles Rams against the Detroit Lions. Rams in the playoff, of course, but seeking to achieve as we look at that magnificent cranium. Otis Sistrom, Alex Garrison. used to be an old Ram. Matter of fact, they got him from the Rams some time ago. Do we congratulate <laughs> the Rams, by the way? Oh, uh, let's congratulate all six teams that have made the playoff spots thus far. There are two unsettled. We've discussed tonight's game and its impact at some length. And, of course, the Eastern Division of the NFC is unsettled. Boy, and what that wild card has done to the races of football. Second down and eight. Stabler will go on top. Flag is down as Carl Garrett gets close to a first down, but again, a flag is down. Rather, Mark Van Egan well, as the receiver. Call is back in the holding area. And that's indeed what it is. Holding against Oakland. He raced that one. 63 holding. 63 on the offense. We heard that all the Gene way up. Gene Upshaw. Number 63. A view from our Goodyear blimp. Magnificent night. Full moon. Temperature relatively mild. And a huge capacity crowd on hand. Let's see if we can we can see the holding. <laughs> no. No, you can't see. <laughs> On the offense. Yeah, we missed the name. We heard it before. Gene Upshaw, number 63, guilty of holding. It'll be second down, about 19. The ball now at the 42-yard line of Cincinnati. Score once again. Oakland, 21. Cincinnati, 13. Must game almost for Cincinnati. And Cliff Branch. Makes a dazzling catch, short of the first down. He had all day, all night, and could have had all year to throw that ball. He is getting the time. Well, look again. Just watch. This is unbelievable. Well, look at Dalby. 50. 63 is Upshaw. 64 is Beeler. And they protect their man. And Stabler goes with another timeout. He's down to one now. We'll look at France. His diving catch. Riley got in front of it in the zone and never could find Cliff French. Oh, we were talking about some of the bowl action that we have coming up for you here on ABC. We think it's exciting. We're talking about the Liberty Bowl. There are many others. Look and listen. ABC Sports presents an outstanding lineup of postseason NCAA action beginning Monday evening, December 20th with UCLA against Alabama and the Liberty Bowl. One week later, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame meet Joe Paterno's Penn State team in the Gator Bowl. And then, New Year's Day, Heisman Trophy winner Tony Dorsett leads the number one team in the country, Pittsburgh, in a classic Sugar Bowl showdown with fourth-ranked Georgia. Three sensational bowl games right here on ABC. Hi, Mom. How are you? A great bowl lineup coming your way right here on ABC. Third down. A long three. Ball at the 28-yard line. Stabler has one timeout remaining. Still on the sidelines. Chit-chatting with head coach John Madden. Stabler has completed 10 out of 12 on the night gift. A total of 113 yards. And he's completed his last six passes. And if they don't start getting a little hustle on him, he'll complete the next 10 or 15. Well, I think de defensively, Cincinnati, Cincinnati must, have, must make an adjustment. And I hope they start shooting linebackers a little bit. Against Stabler, that can kill you, Alex, but you got to take the risk. Well, if you, don't, if you don't have the front four rushing, you got to do something. 51 that's, seconds remaining in the first half. That's a key point about the Oakland offensive line tonight. They have really contained Coy Bacon. When we last saw Coy, Frank, remember what he did to the Rams? He's got a pretty good man on him over there, number 78, Art Shell. That's the key matchup. All right, we're ready to go. John Matt wanted a little explanation from every Tom Bell. He got it. He's satisfied. Oakland down to one timeout. 51 seconds remaining in the first half. And they go with the sweep. Carl Garrett. And hustling up there, number 20, Lamar Parrish. He held on until his friends came. No first down. It'll be fourth down. And we're going to see Earl Mann. 
At least he is on the field. There he is, number 14. Fourth down at the 30 yard line. And no. Nope. Called him back, and Sabler comes back out with Matazak. The attempt would have been approximately 46 yards. That could dictate John Madden's decision. First, you remember earlier in the year, George Blanda was released by the Oakland Raiders because they had drafted Undercurrent. Fred Steinfort from Boston College, a great kicker. A little hard feelings generated from that. Steinfort pulled a muscle. Earl Mann came in on the eighth game. Garrett is in motion. The handoff goes to Banizak. He will not make the first. Oh, Jim LeClaire. Oh, hustle over there. That time he didn't make it. We've talked about LeClaire before having a big year. And the real, of course, we've already touched on it. The reason that John didn't go for the field goal was lack of confidence and man's ability to kick it for the distance. Cincinnati now takes over as we look at Banizak's efforts again. And a fine effort there by number 55, LeClaire. And Cincinnati has 41 seconds and three times out. They began at their 27-yard line. Lingville Elliott, number 36, is in there. He's a good receiver. Ruby Clark is the other setback. And we were going for John McDaniel. And this time, Willie Brown right back there with him. And he got a help from number 32, Jack Tatum, the free safety. Right. Twenty-one to thirteen. A lot of offense. We look at head coach Bill Johnson. He has the hat on. He was a great offensive center with the 49ers. You remember that far back? He's fifty years oh, old. Frank. He, he quit nineteen years ago, I guess it was. Did you play against him at all? <laughs> no, I mean I'm. Yeah, I did. As a matter of fact. Yeah. yeah. I think I did. He quit in nineteen fifty-five. Yeah. That's Mike McCormick who is standing with him. Another fine offensive coach. The second down and ten. This is Elliott. Oh, and he runs into Hendricks. And number 58, Monty Johnson. Elliott is a versatile back. He's an able player. Who at the start of the year wanted to be traded as we have another timeout called because he wanted regular duty and wasn't destined to get it. He is, as Frank said, a fine receiver. And that's the way they primarily use him, using him often on third down situations in the manner that Jimmy Kick used to be used by Miami. And so many others he used. Anderson coming back from his visit with head coach Bill Johnson. Phone wires burning up to the press box where they talking with assistant coaches. I think up Saturday you uh, handled that Russian boxing. I tell you, Vegas, you, I really enjoyed that. It was like going back to Montreal. This a competition in the heavyweight classification only between the United States and the Soviet Union. And you fans are going to really enjoy it because you're going to see the Soviet heavyweight Igor Vysotsky, who was not on the Soviets' Olympic team, but who was twice defeated Teofilo Stevenson, the gold medalist from Cuba. And you're going to see another Muhammad Ali and Gregory Page, 17-year-old from Louisville, who's terrific. Third down and three. The ball at the 35-yard line. Cincinnati now, two timeout. And McDaniel's wide open, and Anderson having to throw over Willie Brown threw it long. Jack Tatum covering Willie Brown underneath classical Oakland Raiders zone. He was really wide open. Pat McAnally comes in on fourth down. Can't help Frank but be enormously impressed by McDaniel. I am. I really like his speed. I'll tell you another happening on Saturday. Bakersfield's going to play in the Junior Rose Bowl. That's Alex right. against Ellsworth, Iowa. Ellsworth, Iowa. So I hope that Bakersfield loses, Frank. Not, not the fact that you're from Bakersfield, but I'd like to see Ellsworth. Right? Ellsworth, one in the nation, Bakersfield number two. You know where Ellsworth is? I know you know where Bakersfield is. McAnally set to punt away. Neil Colsey is deep. Low kick. Colsey takes it in his own 32. And he's promptly gathered up at the 39-yard line, hustling down there, Melvin Morgan. Hope them with one time out, 14 Four. seconds and a half. That's it, 14 seconds. Take a miracle here. A star back pass to Drew Pierce in the waning seconds. 
Sabres not above trying to get it in field position, but he will not be risking anything. They are going to go into the locker room. Things remain the same. 21 to 13 over Cincinnati. That has to delight Pittsburgh. It has to delight Cleveland. Van Egan works on the clock out to the 44-yard line. Coy Bacon made the stop. They're going to let it run down. Oakland satisfied as we approach halftime. And there it is. Oakland satisfied with a 21-13 lead over Cincinnati. Highlights from yesterday. Coming up, don't go away. Howard, you going OC? Mm -hmm. You going on camp? instant cameras and film. In minutes, you get instant pictures with color by Kodak. Instant pictures protected by a beautiful textured satin lux finish. And all oh, that color. So, get ready. Get set. Get a Kodak instant camera from less than $54 at your photo dealers this Christmas. Next on Rich Man, Poor Man, Book Two. The two boys I call my family slugged it out viciously. It seems the whole world turned on Rudy. Estep's getting away with murder, literally. Falcon Eddie's loose again. But the whole world is Charles Estep. Get me Falcon Eddie. Tomorrow at 9, 8 Central and Mounted on ABC. That's the scene live from our Goodyear blimp at the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum where at halftime the Raiders enjoy an eight-point edge over the Cincinnati Bengals. It's been an exciting, active game from the very beginning. The scoring went like this. Early on, Cincinnati, a long march resulting in a touchdown pass, a bomb from Kenny Anderson to surprise starter John McDaniel, a youngster from Lincoln. Three years experience, brilliant speed, and here it is. Anderson, at this point in the game, giving superb protection, heaving downfield, and look at McDaniel, who was beaten Willie Brown, the veteran cornerback. The extra point was missed. That can add up and is adding up more and more as the game progresses. Six to nothing, Cincinnati. Immediately, Oakland came back, sparked by Kenny Stabler. And then, finally, a 25-yard pass from Stabler to Dave Casper, number 87, the brilliant young tight end from Notre Dame. And here that play is. Stabler, too, getting outstanding protection. Right down the middle, and look at Casper. Grab the ball. He's got great hands. Then, Oakland scored again. And again, it was Stabler to Casper. A three-yard pass did that. In the second quarter, Cincinnati scored. Stan Fritz on a one-yard run, and then Pete Banaszak, the veteran, moved in from the one-yard line. 21 to 13, the halftime score. Now to our weekly feature, our halftime highlights, evolving from yesterday's game and tonight from a Saturday game, too. 
They had to pick the ice away at Municipal Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio to get ready for the Browns against the Oilers. And what a day for that Browns defense. You saw that hit on Billy White Shoes Johnson. Another good day for quarterback Brian Seif, who turned the surprising Browns around this season. There he's rolling right and hitting Reggie Rucker downfield. Listen, the early going. A tough day to grip the football, to throw the football, and even more to catch the football. But Seif did the job anyway. Right here, throwing deep downfield into the end zone. Hitting 42, the great veteran Paul Warfield. The Browns took a 7-0 lead, went on to win it 13-10. In the King Dome at Seattle, Washington, Seattle Seahawks giving the Bears a good game of it for the first half. But what a day for Walter Payton, the brilliant sophomore running back who exceeded Gale Sayers' rushing record for a season. Right here, you see him going for 36 yards. Only typical of the day, though. Look at him here. First through the middle. He is right. Follows his blockers beautifully. Has the speed to turn the corner. Accelerating before two tacklers finally upend him. And this, still another example. Goes right. Uses number 65 beautifully. Then again, that speed to turn down the sidelines and then cut back in before finally being caught from behind. That run good for 44 yards. A big day, too, for quarterback Bob Avellino. Two for three touchdown passes. Right here, he hits James Scott, the refugee from the World Football League, who has come back big from knee surgery. Remember, the Jets dropped him. Now Avellini again, throwing to the same target. James Scott, watch him, evade the tackle, cutting right, and he'll go pouring in again for the touchdown as the Bears sprung to a 34-7 win over Seattle. The L.A. Rams at home to the Atlanta Falcons. Pat Hayden, the quarterback. The Rams leading at this point 9 to nothing. Young Hayden with a powerful throwing arm that belies his smallish body. 53 yards to run, Jesse. That set up another Ram touchdown. The Rams really poured it on the Falcons all day long. James Harrison there now. Nobody's got a more powerful throwing arm than Harris. And here he hits White Scales. For a Rams touchdown at this point, the score became 52 to nothing. They won it 59 to nothing. We've got them Saturday night against Detroit. Bush Memorial Stadium, St. Louis, Missouri, Saturday pass. Big game. The Colts against the Big Red. And Jimmy Hart with the score tied 7 to 7. Hits Terry Metcalf. Now look at that. What balance. He never went down. Touchdown. The Cards take a 14 to 7 lead. Now the score is 14 to 10. The Cards threaten. And Steve Jones gets the handoff from Jimmy Hart. The young man from Duke bursts through. Four yards. Touchdown. That made it 21 to 10. Then midway in the fourth quarter, the score is 21 to 17. And the Colts are driving. But look at John Zuck. Zucker. Bert Jones. From the blind side, Jones never knew what hit him. The ball captured by Charlie Davis. And that stopped the cold drive. And that set up a St. Louis field goal, making a 24-17. Still the Colts tried to come back. Jones leading his team. Now this throw out of nowhere. Kenny Reeves. And this young man is some secondary. He was great with Atlanta. Got traded to New Orleans. Wound up with the big red and they don't regret it. That stopped the Colts. And so the St. Louis Cardinals in a must win game kept their playoff hopes alive 24 to 17. In 1976 hill climb tests, a Ford Pinto Pony beat a Toyota Corolla and a Datsun B210. That same kind of excellent performance is built into the 77 Ford Pinto. With his new optional glass hatchback. Exciting new front end styling and his new flip up removable roof option. America's best selling small car last year is an even better idea for 77. When America needs a better idea, Ford puts it on wheels. What makes this television different from any other in the world?
this button. It brings you a home video game built in, a Magnavox exclusive. One touch and it's Magnavox Color TV with a color picture of astonishing clarity. Touch again and it's Odyssey, America's favorite home video game. Why settle for just Color TV when now you can have a built-in home video game too? Only from Magnavox. That's rookie quarterback Craig Penrose from San Diego State. He gets a starting shot for the Broncos. And he makes good use of the opportunity right here. He's going to Haven Moses. Eight-yard touchdown pass. The Bronx lead the Kansas City Chiefs 7 to nothing. The Bronx fell behind 10 to 7. Penrose went to work again. Riley Odoms, the brilliant tight end, escaped that tackle and evaded that tackler and evaded that one. And on he goes for a touchdown. The Broncos lead it 14 to 10. But as the first half was about to end. A brilliant play fake by Mike Livingston, the Kansas City quarterback. He goes over from the right side all alone. The conversion attempt blocked 16 to 14 Kansas City. But Penrose came back in the late going, hitting Haven Moses again. He goes out of bounds. That leaves it up to old high shoes, Jim Turner who kicked three in the Jets' Super Bowl victory those many years ago. Now he adds another, and Denver wins it 17-16. They're 8-5, assured of their best record in 16 years. At San Diego Stadium, tough ball game, overtime contest, 7-7, seven and seven, the 49ers in the charge. Now Dan Fouts going to Charlie Joyner who is having a brilliant year after being traded by the Cincinnati Bengals. That play good for 30 yards. And it's set up now for the Chargers to win in overtime. The lightly used Mercury Morris gets the handoff. Sprints around the left side. Tears in for the touchdown. No need for the extra point. The San Diego Chargers come up with a big victory. 13-7 over the 49ers who had upset Minnesota last Monday. Now, it's Miami against Buffalo in the Orange Bowl in Miami. And it's early in the game. The score, 3-3. The juice gets the handoff from Moranji. Went through that hole on the left side. Down the left sideline with his near world-class sprinting speed. Nobody can touch him. 75 yards. Touchdown. The Bills lead 10-3. His sixth 200-yard or better game in his career. That's a new league record. But the Dolphins strike back. Curiel Harris from Don Strutt. And they tie the score at 10-10. It was an extraordinary day for this young man in a game that amounted to a track meet. Freddie Solomon on a punt return. Watch him go. Nobody's going to get near him. 79-yard punt return. Touchdown, Miami jumps into a 17-10 lead. Early in the fourth period. It's 31-20, Miami. Now look at this reverse. The handoff to Freddie Solomon. He had a simply extraordinary day following his blockers. Now cutting left to the left sideline. He's all alone for a touchdown. Don Shula liked the proceedings, and now this leads us to our play of the week brought to you by Muriel, where there's Muriel smoke, there's fire. And this same young man is involved in our player of the week, and he has to be the player of the week, Freddie Sol. Back to pass goes Don Strzok. Watch this. Deep downfield. Solomon is well covered, double covered, but an incredible leap. And just as incredibly, he keeps his balance. Goes in for the score. 53 yards, touchdown. Miami won it, 45 to 27. In an exciting game over Buffalo. And right there, the play of the week and the player of the week, Fred Solomon.
Halftime activities winding up here at Oakland. That's the story. Oakland over Cincinnati, 21 to 13. We have a half to go. And ABC's Monday Night Football, the Cincinnati Bengals versus the Oakland Raiders is being brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. When America needs a better idea, Ford puts it on wheels. Test drive all Ford's better ideas for 77 at your local Ford dealer now. And we'll be ready for the second half kickoff after this message and a word from our local stations. Next on Family, a visit from Doug's sister creates a family crisis. You are accusing my sister of being an alcoholic. I am a drunk. Drunks need booze and I'm all out. You've had too much to drink. You are in no condition to drive. Family. Tomorrow at 10, 9 Central and Mountain. And the ball bounced free. He was hit by a hustling Melvin Morgan for Cincinnati. And he could be hurt. Yeah, he, he, he was kicked in the bad. shin, I believe, with a knee. Upended. Just look again. This open field tackling is very, very dangerous for ball players. As you can all see right there. Well, Melvin Morgan has been a standout on the special teams all year long. A rookie from Mississippi Valley. As we look at him again. One of 11 rookies on this very young and still so very good Cincinnati team. Look at this. And as we look at it again, Jennings oh. is on his feet, being assisted with a slight lift from the field. Appears to be all right. We certainly hope so. There he is, Rick Jennings, 11th round draft pick out of Maryland. And a good kickoff return, man. He ran two back for touchdowns last year for Maryland. All right, set to go. Open again, leading 21 to 13 over Cincinnati. They are playing that home field edge. They don't want to play in the East during the playoffs. On first and ten, Clarence Davis. Outside and hustles out around the 24-yard line. It'll be second down and six, and let's meet the Oakland Raiders. Ken Stabler was 10 for 12 in that first half. Here is the rest of the offense. Clarence Davis, running back, Los Angeles, California. Mark Van Egan, running back, Cranston, Rhode Island. Fred Bletnikoff, wide receiver, Valley Center, California. Clifford Branch, wide receiver, Houston, Texas. David Casper, tight end, Stockbridge, Wisconsin. And the youngster from Stockbridge, Wisconsin, and Notre Dame has two of those touchdowns of the Oakland Raiders in the first half. And here comes Van Egan, and he has the first down after the 35. That offensive line of the Oakland Raiders that dominated in the first half picks up where they left off. Huge hole right down the middle. Dave Dalby doing some job. 64 is Beeler. Dalby is 50, and you're right. And Van Egan does the rest on his own. Out to the 35, first and 10. Single setback. Van Egan gets the call and hustles for another five yards. Out to the 40. Pursued, caught by Bob Brown. Let's beat that front defense for Cincinnati. Gary Burley, defensive end. Urban Crest, Ohio. Bob Brown, defensive nose guard. Hometown, West Memphis, Arkansas. Ron Carpenter, defensive tackle, Thomasville, North Carolina. Coy Bacon, defensive end, Oceanside, California. When well, that Coy Bacon's a story, two years of minor league football picked up by Dallas back in 67, traded to the Rams, they went to San Diego, and now he's doing it for Cincinnati. Second and five. Van Egan doing the work. Got a yard short of a first down. It'll be third and short. Let's meet the linebackers for Cincinnati. Bo Harris, linebacker, Shreveport, Louisiana. Jim LeClaire, linebacker, hometown South St. Paul, Minnesota. Reggie Williams, linebacker, Flint, Michigan. There they are. The Dempsey front four for Cincinnati, they're linebackers. How did Reggie get from Michigan to Dartmouth College in the hills of Hanover? Jennings, we have been informed, has strained his knee, will probably not be back. Third, less than a yard, the ball at the 44-yard line of Oakland. Van Egan gets the call, gets the first down, out over the 45. It'll be first and 10 for Oakland, and they continue to do, Howard, what they did in that first half. That's the work of the offensive line. And young Van Egan, the second back of Oakland out of Colgate. Van Egan is putting his head down and getting that three and four yards every time he carries that ball right now. He's really putting it to him. Oh, he's really come on, heading for a 1,000 
yard year. With the right player personnel department, you can find great players everywhere. And this man can develop them, John Madden. First and ten. Stabler. A lot of time, and a flag goes down as Brant is down around the 45-yard line, a gain of eight, but again, a flag is down. Flag was in the area where Boletnikov was. Boletnikov is claiming that he was in a field. Referee tonight, Tommy Bell, very colorful referee. As a flare, a little sense of humor does Tommy Bell. Right now, Frank, I'd like to present an amplification. Uh, here's the call. We got number 20, defensive holding. Penalty will be refused. It will be second down and one. Lamar okay. Parrish guilty against Fred Bolitnikoff. You'll see it. <laughs> tear his number off and put it in his trophy cage. It'll be second down and one. Carl Garrett in now, number 31. He's in there with Mark Van Egan. Those are the setbacks for the Oakland Raiders. And Van Egan hustles for two. It'll be, all right, he gets the first down. Down around the 42-yard line. Oakland on the move. Frank in the first half, based upon information that came to us from New York, I said that baseball commissioner Bowie Kuhn had voided the signing of free agent Gary Matthews, formerly of San Francisco, by the Atlanta Braves. Now, in a clarification and an amplification, we are told that the baseball commissioner, Mr. Bowie Kuhn, has sent a telegram to Ted Turner, the owner of the Atlanta Braves, saying that he is considering, considering voiding the signing. On first down, Stabler back, a lot of time, going for Brent. Hey! Oh! oh, and what a spectacular catch against Ken Riley. Cliff Branch, and he continues to amaze even the people that have watched him from the days he played football down in Houston. All right, right now, I don't know who's going to win this football game. Cincinnati can still come back and win it. But where are all those people who are writing all week and saying all week that the Oakland Raiders might not put out to the uttermost? All the wise guys. There he is, Cliff Branch at 9-3 speed. He's working against Ken Riley, who will probably be an all-pro this year. Riley has six interceptions. That time, Branch just took it away from him. Earl Mann for the conversion. And Mann is good, and it is 28-13, and Pittsburgh and Cleveland must be going up in smoke. There he is, the man of the moment. We'll be back. I'm going to ride in this cable car, suspended by cable made from flex and tire cord over Royal Gorge. Tire cord is the main reinforcing agent in a tire. Tensile strength is only one of many performance properties in a tire, but it's one of the most important. Flex 10, a Goodyear exclusive, was developed from a man-made aramid fiber that is pound for pound stronger than steel. Flex 10, the tire cord of the future from Goodyear. Some of the clearest, bluest water in all the world is only one day away on a Boeing jetliner. The Baja, the Caribbean, the South Pacific. Of course, some people have everything right in their own backyard. But if you don't, and warm water is your thing, get hold of your airline and get on a Boeing jetliner. There's a lonely cove somewhere waiting for you. Bill Johnson looking on as Cincinnati Bengals, who have played so well all year, are in trouble. The arm of Kenny Stabler has been magnificent tonight. 42-yard touchdown pass a moment ago to Cliff Branch. Set to kick off, Ray Guy deep, Willie Shelby and Archie Griffin. Guy connects, it'll be Shelby at the five. Shelby up to the 25-yard line. Cincinnati will have to try and get back into it. We'll look at it again. If you want to see a great game, keep your eye on this one. Ken Riley did not have that bad a position. Nope. He just misjudged it. And Cliff Bratch never took his eyes off it. Sure-handed all the way as he has been for the last five years. Oh, Branch. can he run? Look at that stride on Branch. That reception 
He goes to 1,088 yards on the season. First and 10, Cincinnati. Their own 25-yard line. Archie Griffin gets four. It'll be second down and six. And let's meet the offensive unit of the Cincinnati Bengals. First, Kenny Anderson. Kenny Anderson, quarterback, Batavia, Illinois. Archie Griffin, running back, Columbus, Ohio. B.B. Clark, running back, Jacksonville, Florida. Billy Brooks, wide receiver, University of Oklahoma, hometown, Austin, Texas. Isaac Curtis, wide receiver from Santa Ana, California. Bob Trumpy, tight end, Springfield, Illinois. Uh, look at the offensive unit of Cincinnati. Second down and six, the ball at the 29-yard line. Anderson has it batted away, and it could have been either number 74, Dave Rowe, or John Matusa. It is Dave Rowe. It was Rowe. The thing to remember about Cincinnati, though, is this. They trailed Oakland in the playoffs a year ago, 31 to 14. Oakland barely scraped by, 31 to 28, you'll remember. This team can execute the big play, Cincinnati. They've got the speed out there right now at the moment. You've seen John McDaniel. Isaac Curtis, number 85, great speed. Third down, six. Flags. Anderson just throws this away. I think he suspected this call is going to go against Oakland. However, there were two of them went. It could have been somebody being drawn off. Sides, Oakland. Let's meet the defensive front three of Cincinnati. Here they are. John Tuzak, defensive line in Milwaukee, New Creek, Wisconsin. Dave Rowe, defensive tackle. I live in Ashboro, North Carolina. Otis Sistrunk, defense in Columbus, Georgia. And there's three tough looking dudes. I wouldn't want to tangle them uh, anywhere. None of them. Uh, uh. They are doing quite a job tonight against Cincinnati. And they lost early in the year. Tony Klein, Horace Jones, Kelvin Corver, Art Toms, those all were the linemen from last year. The only one that survived is Otis Sistrunk from the team they thought they'd have. All out with injuries. Third and short. Third and about a yard. This is Tony Davis, the rookie from Nebraska, and he gets the first down out close to the 40-yard line. To show you the kind of year Kenny Stable is having, it's the fifth time this year he's thrown three touchdown passes in a game, and he's now got 26 touchdown passes on the season. That ties his best mark ever. Ball at the 41-yard line, Cincinnati. Nine and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. Anderson had Trumpy open again, and he had to release it a little, a little earlier than he wanted to. And again, they continue to cover Trumpy with the linebackers. Monty Johnson over there working on Trumpy. Matuzak, however, put the pressure on Kenny Anderson. He had to release it just a little early. Bill Johnson now a worried coach, and John Madden is never unworried. Bill Johnson looks a little bit from certain angles like Tommy Prothrow, you know, Frank? Indeed he does. Anderson incomplete. His last five passes. Second down and ten. Not incomplete here. John McDaniel gets the first down. Steps over midfield of 49-yard line. Let's meet the linebackers now for Cincinnati. Bill Villapiano, linebacker, Asbury Park, New Jersey. Monty Johnson, middle linebacker, Lincoln, Nebraska. Willie Hall, linebacker, New Britain, Connecticut. Ted Hendricks, linebacker, Miami, Florida. Now my point being is Cincinnati could use them. <laughs> <laughs> good cover, Gibbs, good cover. McDaniel now six receptions, 171 yards. Ball inside the 49-yard line. McDaniel trying to get back into it. They trail 28 to 13. Going long, and it's Isaac Curtis down the sidelines and almost picked off and then almost caught by Curtis. It was number 32, Jack Tatum, back there covering. Oh, so close. 
as we look at it again, this is exactly what I meant. Anderson has come back capacity. Now he got a break there because the ball was, well, Tatum tried to catch it with his elbows instead of his oh. hands, Frank. That was Skip Thomas. And there's Zach Tatum getting double coverage. Skip Thomas almost had it. Yes, Skip Thomas. Time right. to perfect. Now look at this. And those are the things that you think about in April and May and wonder why you're not in the playoffs. Second down and ten. Motion man, McDaniel. Anderson rifles one out there to Isaac Curtis. He has it, and as you can see, just, just short of a first down. Skip Thomas again doing a fine job of coverage. Got a lot of USC defensive backs out there. You look around, Skip Thomas, Charles Phillips, Marvin Cobb for Cincinnati. 9.02 left in the third quarter. Anderson has his team on the move. It'll be third and less than a yard. Tony Davis comes in. He's that fourth-round draft pick out of Nebraska. He's in there with Stan Fritz, second-year man out of North Carolina State. Those are the setbacks for Cincinnati on short yardage. Fritz. <laughs> was going to hurdle and couldn't find anyone to go over, but he gets the first down, down to the 37-yard line. Those noises you keep hearing in the background, fireworks, enthusiastic fans, hope they're very careful where they set them off. John McDaniel having an extraordinary night. Six receptions, as Frank noted, 172 yards, top reception game on the air, Ron Jesse, 220 yards, seven catches against Miami on October 3rd. First and ten. Anderson, play action. This time going to Trump, and he is covered. Intercepted by Atkinson, but a flag is down. <laughs> Looks like it might be against Oakland. I think it was Ted Hendricks who just bapped someone there. Slapped him on the helmet. Yeah. Personal foul, Oakland. That oh. That's a big play for Cincinnati. Was it Ted? Let's watch Ted Hendricks right now and see if he was guilty of an infraction. Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> a little one. Oh. Rufus Mays, number 71. Rufus Mays was amazed at that one. You'll get the call. Rufus Mays is been frustrating Ted Hendricks all night. Here it is. So that keeps Cincinnati very much alive. Let's listen for the call. We have number 83, personal foul on the defense, first down and 10. And the ball at the 22-yard line of Oakland. Cincinnati battling to get back into this. They're future is rather dark if they lose this tonight. Archie Griffin. Look out. He'll go in. 22 yards. Oh, Archie Griffin. And now you know why this man won that Heisman Award twice. What a move he put on 32 Jack Tatum. He just left Tatum strewn upon the ground. He and suckered him out. And credit to that offensive line. Absolutely perfect execution. So here they are fighting back. They never know when they're beat. Very point we've been emphasizing. Chris Barr for the conversion. And it's good. And again, an extra point back in the first quarter. Do you remember when? We'll be back. Raiders over Cincinnati 28-20. If anybody loves trains, it's me, Johnny Cash. You know, if your boy's under 10 like mine is, he needs a big Lionel like this Black River Freight. Lionel also makes HO gauge trains for older kids like this Burlington 181. But for smaller hands, the big Lionel is easier to handle and put on the track. This Christmas, get your boy a train that's built for the way young boys play. A big, rugged Lionel. Lionel, the big train for small hands. 
the sweet handling Mustang II Cobras. No other domestic car in its class gives you all this standard. Spoilers, stabilizer bars, staggered shocks, rack and pinion steering, steel belted radials, and four on the floor. That's why Cobra takes the curves like a snake. When America needs a better idea, Ford puts it on wheels. Chris Barr sets it up as Cincinnati is drawn closer. But again, that missed conversion early on is starting to tell. We knew that it would, because these two teams have always played very close. Since 1971, they have not been separated in any contest by more than a touchdown. Barr riffles one. And this is you begin his first action of the night. And again out to the 27 yard line. And let's go back and look Archie Griffin with the beautiful blocking by the offensive line. They open up a great hole. There it is. Shinners with a fine block. Now watch the move. He puts on another fellow Ohio State alumnus. That's Tatum number 32. And he just collects a lot of air. Atkinson 43 too late. You begin to return the kickoff is of course the same you begin who used to be with the Miami Dolphins. Good runner. All right, we have 8:03 here in the third quarter. An offensive football game is a figure to be. Ben Egan nailed and dropped. Coy Bacon number 79. There's a loss of three. It'll be second down and 13. Ron Pritchard is in the game for Cincinnati. We did not expect to see him. We told you about his knee surgery early in the year. Oh, he's a tough cookie. That was a big hit and an important hit by Coy Bacon. Second down, 13. Ball at the 22. And Davis, Clarence Davis picking his way, gets the first down out around the 40-yard line. Alex, they couldn't have had a more important play come at a more vital time than that particular one, picking up the first down. Look at that hole, and look at the block by number three. Look at the balance, and to the outside he goes. Just a natural instinct. I don't think you can teach people that. Hey, uh, Oakland, everyone blocks and works on this offensive club. Do you see 21 blocking? That's Cliff Branch, the little speedster. He's and, out there blocking. And Van Egan. Mark Van Egan, number 30. Okay, good Brilliant block. In front of it. Davis again right side and this time he's rippled there by number 67 Gary Burley George Atkinson number 43 the man who made the interception that was nullified in the wake of the penalty against Ted Hendricks George Atkinson reflects very deeply the rivalry the intense dislike that the Raiders and the Steelers have for one another today he filed a three million dollar lawsuit against three parties the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Oakland Tribune, and Pittsburgh coach Chuck Knoll. This all dates back to a controversial play involving him and Lynn Swan when the two teams met earlier in the season. Second down and 12. This is Cliff Branch on the reverse. And Cliff Branch turns the corner, gets 10 yards out of it. It'll be third down and two, the ball out around midfield. And Boy, that turns was a great off. call. He sure does turn it on. You know, a lot of track men come into football and they don't know how to run the shoulder pads and carrying that thing. It isn't heavy, but it just makes things a little awkward. But Cliff Branch can do it. What did I say the lawsuit was? Three million dollars? Fella just came into this booth. I don't know what he signed for, but it may be close. Reggie Jackson, the newest of the Yankees. Third, less than a yard. Banizak, and he came very close. I don't know. Key series for Oakland, as Howard mentioned, and I think he, Banizak is indicating that he thinks he has it. And we'll have a measurement. I don't see any change in, as we await the measurement in Reggie Jackson's attire, Frank. <laughs> But he's just wearing the usual mink coat. He's wearing a $5,000 jacket. 
Banizak was right. He has the first down. Oakland continues to move. They continue to work on the clock. 5.59 remaining in the third quarter. Let's go back to the first game of the season. 31-28. Oakland defeated Pittsburgh. This is the controversial play involving George Atkinson and Lynn Swan. Right there was when George gave Lynn a belt. He said he thought they were throwing to Lynn. Subsequently, all kinds of statements. First down, Stabler. Picked off. LeClaire picked it off and then dropped the ball. And Cincinnati, Cincinnati retains possession. Jim LeClaire, they'll tell you in Cincinnati, they think he's all pro in the middle. Well, that's the break Cincinnati needed. Well, I don't know where Kenny was putting this. I couldn't understand that throw at all. Right into a crowd of white shirts. Maybe he's anticipating Casper was going to continue his route over the middle in any event. Sometimes you have to throw between defensive linemen, and you just don't see it all developing. Cincinnati, good field position. Their own 49-yard line, 5.30, remaining in the third quarter, and they trail by eight. Anderson had no place to put the ball. Archie Griffin slipped, went to his knees, and Anderson loses a yard. 5.24 and counting down, left in the third quarter. Cincinnati is all the time in the world if their defense can hold together and if they can move the football. Oakland's first turnover of the night. All right, McDaniel, 86, goes to the top of your screen. 85, Isaac Curtis to the bottom. Second down and 11. Griffin now in motion. And Anderson... Gets his picked off by Monty Johnson. So one turnover deserves another, I guess. And Oakland is back in possession. They'll have a first and ten, their own 40-yard line. And, well, you can imagine what goes on with each turn of the football in Pittsburgh and Cleveland. Bad time to give it right back. They had the off-used word momentum going for them, and they gave it right back. Monty Johnson at the interception will be back. Fly a lot closer to the crops than to the clouds. But when those last acres are dusted, you know it's Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. It's time to relax. America's quality beer, Miller High Life. Miller stands clear. Beer after beer. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. I'm Joe Namath, and this is the new Double Mac by Hamilton Beach. It makes two burgers in 60 seconds and flips its grid to make great sandwiches, too. The lid is also a terrific mini grill. Makes bacon and eggs, pork chops, pancakes, hot dogs, minute steaks, fried potatoes, just about anything you want to cook, you can cook double quick with the new Double Mac. The best thing from Hamilton Beach since... The Little Mac and the Butter Up Popper. Only from the Hamilton Beach Scoville World of Appliances. Bonnie Johnson, the man who just made his second interception of the evening. 6'5", 240, fourth year out of Nebraska. You get a linebacker that size with his kind of swiftness and range, you've really got something. There's another developing in the mold of Bonnie Johnson. That's Brad Van Pelt with the Giants, who had a brilliant day yesterday. He is huge, too. First and ten. Mark Van Egan, right side, gets four. It'll be second down and six. Two weeks from tonight, the Liberty Bowl, UCLA and Alabama. I'll be with us as and this, quite a bowl lineup coming your way. This Saturday night, the Silver Dome, Pontiac, Michigan, the Los Angeles Rams against the Detroit Lions. Yeah, and they're going to get killed, too. Detroit will stomp on them. <laughs> they were just waiting for them. That's why they, they lost to the Giants, Frank. Uh, Van Egan now with 58 yards. Clarence Davis. Clarence Davis gets about a yard of it. It'll be third down and about four. LeClaire moving over to make the stop. I'll tell you, all the linebackers to me look like they're way over six foot four, six foot three, and they're getting bigger and taller. Not only that, look at the way they run. Look at the way they hit. That time Davis ran up the back of Gene Upshaw, the guard, and helped things out for LeClaire. Eddie Stabler with an eight-point lead. 
He has 338 remaining in the third quarter. The ball at the 46 yard line. And he keeps one set back in. Stabler had Dave Casper wide open and he is upset because he knows he just missed. He missed and he missed on an important third down situation. He threw it behind Casper. Nobody near Kenny. Well, he got, excuse me, Howard, he got a rush at the very end and he really had to take no, right there and give it off. Well, throw it behind, just a plain bad throw. What's going to happen to the greatest? There's Ron Pritchard trying to cover. Now he's playing a knee surgery that took place Earlier in the year, early during, actually during spring training. All right, Ray Guy will punt away. Lamar Parrish is deep, number 20. Tommy Casanova, number 37. Only Guy's second punt of the night. First one was a 55-yarder. This one he hangs. Casanova feels it at the 10. Gets out to the 13, and he's buried. 44-yard punt. And if you've just joined us, we are watching a whale of a football game with a lot on the line. At the moment, the Raiders over Cincinnati, 28 to 20. Cincinnati got the scoring off first, but they missed the conversion, and you just felt that that was going to be an important item later in the game, and indeed it has been. What's on the line? If Cincinnati loses, they fall into a tie with Pittsburgh and Cleveland at 9-4. If the three teams go through and win their games next week, Pittsburgh will win. The Central Division of the AFC. They have the best record among the three teams in that division. Oakland is playing for the home field advantage on all counts in the playoffs. Anderson over the middle to Trumpet. First down, out to the 28-yard line. Monty Johnson picks up Trumpy, makes the tackle. Howard, did you know there was 11 o'clock curfew put on the Pittsburgh Steelers tonight? Oh, that really? Really? Yeah, that's the truth. It's the truth. But I know they're all up watching this game, but they're not together. You know, they have to be separate. I'll tell you, you really have to admire the way they've, they've come back. They have not complained. Sure. They said, we did it to ourselves, and now we're trying to get out of it. And they have just they were the one best and, in the league. They were one and four, and I think you've got to give Chuck Noll, the coach, a real good nod for the way he brought that team back. He didn't panic. First and ten. Anderson. And going for Isaac Curtis, and I'm not so sure Isaac wanted to get his hands on that one. <laughs> he knew he was going to get pounded. That's Gary Burley, the youngster from the University of Pittsburgh with Cincinnati. He's really a rookie. He didn't play last year. And you noticed a bit of a change in Cincinnati's defensive line play a few series back when first Coy Bacon and then Gary Burley stopped Oakland running backs. Which they had not been doing in the first half. Second down and ten. Play action. Anderson draws a crowd. Flag is down. Flag is down there. Bob Trumpy and Atkinson were all tangled up. Flag is down where you get the interference call. Use of hands, and it's going to go against Oakland. George Atkinson got all tangled up with Bob Trumpy downfield. Round number 41. And automatic first down for the Cincinnati Bengals. The last two possessions by Oakland, they've had a chance. A to use up the clock, and B, if they could score, maybe to clinch the ball game. Both oh. times they failed. Once with an interception, and the second time the badly thrown pass by Stabler intended for Casper. The call goes against Phil Villapiano. No, it was not Atkinson. First down and ten. Oh, and Willie Brown read that all the way, and it was picked off by Jack Tatum, but Willie Brown played number 85 Isaac Curtis perfectly and Jack Tatum who roams far and wide from free safety comes up with the interception let's look again it was a square out and down pattern to Isaac Curtis Willie Brown read it all the way overthrown and for the second time 
In his last two possessions, Kenny Anderson has been intercepted for the Cincinnati Bengals. Three times on the night, and we'll look at it again. See, Willie Brown is back there, and Kenny tried to hang it up long to get, get it away from Brown, and there was Tatum. Oakland, first and 10, 25-yard line, 2-16, remaining in the third quarter. Lawrence Davis, and he hurries out to the 29-yard line. Gain of four, it'll be second down and six. Lawrence Davis having quite a year. He came in over 450 yards rushing, but for him, a big year in receiving. 26 receptions coming into the night. Which is amusing because they used to say he had bad hands, Frank. Remember? They stopped saying it after the Stabler waffle ball to him that beat Miami in that classic playoff game. 42 passes between the two quarterbacks tonight. A flag is down, and Davis also goes down at the line of scrimmage. Jim LeClaire hustling over there. Corral. Davis getting a little help from Bernard Jackson. Number 23 who's in the lineup now for Cincinnati at safety. Offside. And we're having a little bit of trouble with Tommy Bell's microphone. Yeah, but it's provided by the league, not by <laughs> us now, Frank. So it's not us, our guys. I think Don it was, a, I think it was a great innovation. Let's try again, Tommy. They can't blame. We have number 78 offsides on the defense. Bob Brown offside. Cincinnati. It's not a presidential debate. They can't blame that gap on us. That's right. Second down, about a foot. Ball resting just inside the 35-yard line of the Oakland Raiders. 135 remaining in the third quarter. Van Egan, left side, first down, Oakland. 28 to 20, Oakland over Cincinnati. Seesaw offensive football game. Oakland will clinch. Best record in the conference. If they win tonight, they'll have a 12-1 and, and one mark, and that's remarkable considering the injuries they've had. There's the man that put it together, and he had to do it with 11 men lost for the season. Makeshift defensive line. Some people said they didn't have a tough schedule. Well, they're all tough. Certainly this one tonight. On first down, Clarence Davis. And picked off there by Riley after a gain of a couple. It'll be second down and eight. Tell you, he completed it, but that's a dangerous pass. Another step, and Riley could have picked it off and jogged it. Little Van Egan having a good night, Frank. 15 carries, 61 yards. He's just had a good year. Boy, it's a good thing because Marv Hubbard had his third shoulder operation last summer. They lost him. And Egan again. It's about three. It's going to be third down and four. Gary Burley hustling over along with LeClaire to make the stop. Pete Banizak, number 40. And you're watching another exclusive of ABC Sports. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. Cincinnati 20, Oakland 28. We'll return after this from our local stations. Wednesday, it's Christmas in Disneyland with all your favorite Disney characters. And Sandy Duncan, Art Carney, and Glenn Campbell. Then, Richard and Karen Carpenter bring you the songs that made them international stars with guest John Denver and Victor Borga right after Christmas in Disneyland. Wednesday starting at 8, 7 Central and Mountain.
the Goodyear Blimp Columbia hovering high over Oakland Alameda Stadium where a capacity crowd is watching very pridefully their Oakland Raiders who have been performing rather well here this evening a 28 to 20 lead over the Cincinnati Bengals Bengals desperately trying to get back into this game Stabler fires to Cliff Branch, and he has it down around the 38-yard line. Another open first down. Ken Riley made the tackle. Couldn't ask for a better clutch pass than that. Well, one thing I like about Stabler, he doesn't hold the ball. Doggone it, I like that. If they get eight points in front, they don't just hold up and run three, three plays and get out. Well, he throws the ball. That's the very range he likes to work in best. Alex, I mentioned the fourth. Look at that. That's right. We'll be bringing you... The Pro Bowl game, January 17th, from the Kingdom in Seattle. On first and 10, Stabler 14 of 18, three touchdowns, 185 yards, hands off to Clarence Davis. He runs into a problem right at the line of scrimmage. Gary Burley and Boyd Bacon. Made the stop. What are you saying, Otis? <laughs> Notice the shot. He's having a good time. But you got a long way to go, my friend. His cousin Manny had a pretty good year, though. Love you this year. He just did a film, too, you know, called Car Wash, I guess, for Universal Pictures. Otis did? Yeah. Very good at it. All defensive linemen are. Yeah, Second down right. and ten. Stabler and it's Garrett. Garrett inside the 15 to the 13. Never let you off the floor. They'll never make defensive calls. That's why Stabler is great. Oh, he does not mess around. You hit it right on the head, Alex. He has a lot of faith in that arm of his. He doesn't well, care he doesn't, where he, he is on the field or who he throws to. He doesn't c consider it any more dangerous than running, I'll tell you that. There he is, Kyle Garrett, the receiver. A lot of talent. Worked his way around the league quite a bit. Bill Johnson, the coach of the Bengals, looking on. First and ten for Oakland. Garrett still on his feet. And look at Carl Garrett. Garrett inside the ten to the eight. I guess he has found a home, Frank. Oh. He's a happy man here. A lot of ability in that young man. There always has been. He made something out of nothing. Four yards, second down and six. They take guys and use them for what they can do. They adjust to these reworked projects. And Van Egan looked like he might have got just a jump on the ball, but there are no flags. It's a yard, a yard and a half. It'll be third down, a long three. Guys in the stands, checking things out. They've seen a lot of great football out here in Oakland over the past few years. I'll call it third and four. Flip branch, bottom of the screen. Let off the top. Let the cuffs open. Touchdown, Fred Balletnikov. <laughs> His 69th career touchdown. He's so old, he's doing a fox trot out there. He's amazing. He's Stabler. really amazing. And Stabler's fourth touchdown of the night. The ball touches his hands. That's it, Buster. It's not going anywhere else. Positive gloop. I think there might have been a little sigh of relief out around Cleveland and Pittsburgh. Will Johnson, obviously upset. Earl Mann for the conversion. In the heart. Uh, Oakland moves further out in front of the Cincinnati Bengals. 35 to 20. We'll be back. This year, the new Ford Granada came to Germany to match the quiet of its ride with a $20,000 Mercedes-Benz. German engineers tested the cars, measuring interior sound levels in decibels on the DBA scale. Their findings? The Granada consistently rode as quiet as the Mercedes. Es ist wirklich bemerkenswert, dass sich hier Granada nach diesen Tests mit dem sehr teuren Mercedes vergleichen lässt. This quiet ride at the modest price of a Ford Granada. 
When America needs a better idea, Ford puts it on wheels. Okay, Linda here's got to protect your family. A woman? Sure, a woman needs life insurance just as much as a man does. And this New York life defense has just the insurance plan to do it. Put the blitz on Linda's money problems. Lock out her retirement worries. Come on, Linda, it's all yours now. Let it go. I've got it. Financial security. Where the name of the game is life, there's New York life. Back in Oakland, Kenny Stabler with the hot hand has the Oakland Raiders out in front of Cincinnati, 35 to 20. He has thrown four touchdown passes. Ray Guy will kick deep to Willie Shelby and Archie Griffin. It'll be Willie Shelby at his own 10. Shelby with a fine run back moves out to the 37 yard line. Rice down there for the stop. Let's go back and take a look at that last touchdown pass. All right, there's Stabler and there's Boletnikov with the position and how quickly that ball zoomed in there. And he's working against one of the fine ones, Lamar Parrish, a two time Pro Bowler. And even our blimp camera. Yeah, he's still Archie made Griffin. He's working. Frank Stabler, 16 out of 20, 208 yards, four touchdown passes. First and 10, Anderson back. And Anderson goes out to John McDaniel. He has the first down out around the 49-yard line. Let's go back and take a look at the way Bolitnikov works against Lamar Parrish. And he has more moves on the snake. <laughs> He's not the greatest dancer in the world, though, Frank. Watch him if we can get that. That time, he just drifted across the goal line, waiting to... Clear the linebackers. <laughs> <laughs> I think he better study. There he is. I think he better study White Shoes Johnson of Houston. Uh, get the real moves down. Cincinnati has got to get on the scoreboard. And they have to get there quickly. Main man is Isaac Curtis. Curtis on the reverse. Nowhere to go. And Curtis pounded out of bounds at the 46-yard line. The whole Oakland defense and had that late Curtis is hurt. Referee is down. Curtis is all right. He's up. This is the second time this year we've seen a referee, in, uh, an official injured, Frank. The other time was in the Cincinnati game. Remember, we waited for the substitute official who never came. And everybody appears to be all right. You want to see a crunchy block, they call it a crackback block. It's perfectly legal as long as you're not doing it to the linebacker. And in this area, it is legal. The block delivered there by Vernon Holland against Matuzic. Curtis. Meanwhile, John McDaniel has seven catches for 187 yards. That's almost all of Kenny Anderson's 239 yards passing tonight. And Oakland is warming up another quarterback, number 15, Mike Ray. Second down, 14. Anderson. And taking a little bit of a risk as he goes out to Isaac Curtis, who is well covered by Willie Brown. It'll be third down and 14. 10 minutes, 40 seconds remaining in this game. I'll tell you once again, the Cincinnati plays the Jets next week. Pittsburgh plays the Houston Oilers. And the Cleveland Browns play at Kansas City. It all winds up in a tie. Pittsburgh is going to win. They have a 3-1 record within their division against the other teams, Cincinnati and Cleveland. Cincinnati has a 2-2 record. Cleveland a 1-3. and three. Third down and 14. Ooh. And Otis Sistruck laid it on Kitty Anderson. Ten minutes, 35 seconds left in the ball game. A tremendous play in the clutch by a quietly aroused Oakland team. I say quietly because they weren't making a lot of statements during the week. Media people were. And fans were. Look at Otis Sistruck right there breaking through and sacking Kenny Anderson. But this Oakland team came into this game a dedicated team, determined to test itself. 
Pat McAnally. Remember him? College All-Star game. A year ago last summer. Broken leg. Neil Colsey handles it at the 30. And Colsey hit there at the 37. So we have 10 minutes, 16 seconds remaining in the football game. We'll be returning. Radio Shack has the perfect gift for pedal pushers. The famous Archer bicycle radios that let you play Santa for as little as $9.95. Or give the original Road Patrol radio with built-in horn and reflector. Or really make them happy with this deluxe AM-FM model. All three disconnect quickly for safekeeping or off-bike use. Low-cost Archer bike radios. Only at Radio Shack, a Tandy company. Next on Rich Man, Poor Man, Book Two. The two boys I call my family slugged it out viciously. It seems the whole world's turned on Rudy. Estep's getting away with murder, literally. Falconetti's loose again. But the whole world is Charles Estep. Get me Falconetti. Then on Family, a visit from Doug's sister creates a family crisis. You are accusing my sister of being an alcoholic. You are in no condition to drive. Family, right after Rich Man, Poor Man. Tomorrow, starting at 9, 8 Central and Mountain on ABC. The story here at Oakland. Ten minutes and 16 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Oakland has dominated completely here in the second half. The Cincinnati Bengals, they lead 35 to 20. Oakland playing for the home field of the playoffs, the best record in the conference. That's what they have at stake. This man has had a great night for the Raiders, as has his quarterback, Ken Stabler. There he is. He has been on the bench now. This is Mike Ray. All first. right, quick break in the action. Be right back to you, Giff. Here he is, the newest millionaire in baseball, Reggie Jackson, now the New York Yankees, a resident of Oakland. He's just bought the town. <laughs> and, Reggie, you got to be proud about the Raiders' performance thus far. Well, they got a great football team, Howard. The baseball team isn't much here anymore, but they're going to carry on the pride in the winning. They've always been a ball club that's always won. I can't lose tonight, though, because I'm a Steeler fan and I live in Oakland, so I got it all going for me. <laughs> <laughs> Good all to right. have you with us, my friend. Giff? All right, Mike Ray looking over his second down and eight. Hands off to Mark Van Egan over the right side. He gets a couple. It'll be third down and four. Let me tell you about Mike Ray. He's listed as a rookie, but he went up to Canada and played in Toronto behind Joe Theismann back in 1973. When Theismann went to the Washington Redskins, Ray took over and led that Eastern Division for Toronto in passing. He was originally an eighth-round draft pick out of the University of Southern California in 1973, but as I said, went to Toronto rather than coming to Oakland immediately. That's what he's done. Most of that took place last week in a romp over Tampa and his former head coach, John McKay. Third down, long four, flag down. And Ray goes down as he unloads, deep going for Mike Ciani. Coy Bacon <laughs> really leveled Mike Ray. That's well, the flag is down. We'll wait for the call. Let's see how he levels him. <laughs> he levels him. A lot of frustrations the part of Cincinnati at the moment. He leveled him head on, Mr. Karras. Motion goes against Oakland. That'll bring up fourth down. Not, uh, of course, I couldn't see him way back here. All right. Again, an old friend in the booth with us. We've just spent five days with him in Las Vegas. Our producer, Don Olmeyer, our director, Chet Forty, and yours truly watching him win another. How much? Oh, I played pretty well, Howard. I played uh, four days and won $80,000. So it's pretty good four days' work for me. Not a bad week's work for the greatest tennis player in the world, Jimmy Connors, who wanted to fly up just to see this game. You're enjoying it, I know. I enjoy it very much, Howard. It's a pleasure to be here and looking forward to a continued great game. All right, back to the action. Thank you, Jimmy. Continued success. Gray guy at a punt. Deep, Lamar Parrish, 20. Tommy Casanova, 37. Oh, and Ray Guy hung it up there for an hour. <laughs> oh, fair catch, call for, made 15 yard line by Tommy Casanova. We have 848 remaining in this game, and we'll be returning to Oakland in just a moment. See, you got a new Maverick, Bill. Yeah, so you got a new Volari. Looks great. Looks great. Volari's got a classy vinyl interior. Well, look at Maverick's classy vinyl interior. Volari has split bench seats. Maverick has reclining bucket seats. Vinyl roof? Vinyl roof. 
Tinted glass. Tinted glass, sure. White side side walls. White side walls, sure. What's the sticker price on a new Maverick? Maverick's a couple of hundred dollars less than a comparable Volari. I'm going for a new lawnmower tomorrow. Would you come with me, Bill? Sure. When America needs a better idea, Ford puts it on wheels. Seven out of ten cars on the road today can use my Sunoco 190. It's made to sell below regular. Look, I wouldn't want to let my customers spend more money than they have to. I can be very friendly, yes I can. Cause it's my business, and I'm my own man. I'll make real sure, you'll be back to me for more. I can be very friendly, very friendly. Yes I can. December 13th, a major motion picture event. Linda Blair, Kirk Douglas, Richard Dreyfuss, Helen Hayes, Anthony Hopkins, Burt Lancaster, and Elizabeth Taylor. Victory at Entebbe. We're back in Oakland. The score once again, the Raiders over Cincinnati, 35 to 20. There are eight minutes and 48 seconds remaining in the game. There's Cliff France. He's had a whale of a night. Went over 1,000 yards. And Clarence Davis. Career. Clarence Davis running on a bad ankle. Cincinnati still is going to try and pull it out. Trail by 15. Anderson. And finally locates the receiver downfield. It's Archie Griffin. But as we look down over the entire field, the Raiders picking up. Covering the three Cincinnati Bengal receivers like a blanket. They really did. And you know, we've really had a lot of money in this booth tonight, Frank. I'll tell you. Reggie Jackson. Oh, what is he, three million? Jimmy Conn is $20,000 a day. That was a great tournament at Caesars Palace. How much money did you make this year? I mean, I mean we're talking about of, money. We're chopped liver. <laughs> a lot of offense tonight. We've been watching also. It's second down and ten. Anderson has to unload it, and he really got As clobbered. The Oakland defensive unit realizes that Anderson is going to have to throw the ball. Third down and ten. They will disregard run. They will not play run. They will go for the passer. 8:37 left in the ball game. A 15-point edge for the Oakland Raiders. Anderson, 12 of 30, 239 yards. He's been sacked twice. Tip Myers in the game for Cincinnati, 25 on third down and 10. He's up there at the top of your screen in the slot. Over the middle, and Isaac Curtis spins away from tacklers, and Curtis is not giving up. He moves it out to the 37-yard line, first down Cincinnati. This bunch will never give up. much of that talk around without taking into account the kinds of human beings so many of these men are. Let's look at it again. There's Isaac with the catch. Brilliantly, he eludes two would-be tacklers before finally being gang tackled. Well, you don't come into a game with 11-1 record unless you have a lot of pride in what you do. On first down, Anderson, and again, good defensive coverage Don McDaniel Anderson trying to thread it him over the head of 10 Hendricks and that's tough he goes about six seven and in front of Willie Brown what's happening to him now is he's trying he desperately doesn't want to be intercepted so he's trying on the one hand to be threading it as you say very and yet being cautious to avoid the intercept and that has to disturb his pass so he's at, at the moment not throwing that sharply second down and ten Bobby Clark on the quick draw play. And that was sniffed out very well. Phil Villapiano. Bobby Clark gets four. It'll be second, third down and six. Meanwhile, every running play costs them now precious time, being so many points behind. 15 to be exact. 7.30 left and counting down. You just have to run those plays occasionally, though, or to keep open somewhat honest. They're not paying any attention at all to the run. Those down three linemen are just... Pouring. They're taking any angle they can get. And 
Anderson fires to McDaniel. He has it. And he has the first down. That's nine receptions for young John McDaniel tonight. He has been a standout performer for the Bengals. Oh, he has been that. You know, he had no receptions coming into the game for the year. Only two last year. He, sort of the king of the special teams. They used to put him out on the flank of the punting unit. He'd beat the ball down. Had 195 yards with those receptions, too, Howard. It's not bad. Oh. First and 10. The ball at the 48. And Griffin trips up. They mark it just at the line of scrimmage. Before the night is over, McDaniel may go past Jesse's 220 yards executed for the Rams against the Dolphins on October 3rd. Meanwhile, we're down to 648 and counting down in the ballgame. Saturday night, we're going to be Pontiac, Michigan, the Los Angeles Rams. They have won their division. Looking forward to the playoffs. They go against the Detroit Lions, a team that bounced back. They got their lunch yesterday in New York. Archie Griffin. And this is Booby Clark. A lot of running room. And a good defensive play by Monty Johnson. He's been all over the field tonight. Trips up Booby Clark short of the first down. It'll be third down and about two. And he's got the size and the strength to execute the one-on-one -on -one tackle against Booby Clark. Who was once you'll remember a tight end, Frank. Yeah, Booby Clark was a tight end. Charles is his first name. <laughs> and that part. Let's, let's stick with Booby. All right. Charles Billiard comes into the lineup. The Tuzak gets a roar of ov ovation, and he comes out. And Anderson continues to work. He goes to John McDaniel, his 10th reception of the night. And he is tackled by Willie Brown, but not until McDaniel has a first down. Let's pause five seconds and allow our local stations and our friends along the line to identify themselves. <laughs> 